three, two, one. Hey, Darman fam, check out this podcast. I know you're going to love it. This is Adam <laughs> from Your Movie Sucks, and this is Sardonicast, the podcast Sardonicast, Darman's favorite podcast, everybody. Uh, who else is here? I'm Ralph Movie Maker. And I'm Alex from IHE. And that was nice, a nice flash to the past. <laughs> what past? Nice. This is still ongoing. Uh, everything's in the past after we say it, Adam. Oh, true. Okay, there is no <laughs> present. <laughs> Fuck. Damn. We're getting deep on this one. All right. We're all going to die. Synecdoche. All right. Podcast yeah. is over. <laughs> I have a question for you, Alex, actually. If you, if you and enter... I you too. Oh, shit. Okay. This is great. We're starting off you go fresh. First. If you enter a building and you're, you're on like street level and then you go up one floor, like up the stairs or up the elevator by one floor, what floor are you on? The, the first floor? Holy fuck. Oh my God. I can't deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a UK thing, sorry. It's, um, yeah, the first floor is ground floor. Yeah, you take the, the lift to the first floor. <laughs> no. <laughs> it makes sense for the first floor to be the one that's the, on, that's the first one you enter when you're on the ground. That's the, if you go up a floor, you're on the second floor. I can't so, deal with it. This this podcast has just destroyed my worldview. Of, of I'm the glad. UK. Just 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 having to describe the way it works over here to other people, and just having to be the ambassador for British things. Mm -hmm. It's too much pressure, man. So I you just... call it like floor zero when you enter, or like just Grant G? Does anybody ever call it zero? Well, the only time I can ever think of even like thinking about what floor I'm on is when I'm in somewhere with a lift or an elevator, mm -hmm. I guess. So yeah, you, you go into a house and go. Ah, I'm on the ground floor right now. Let's go up to one. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It would it would make more sense if instead of you calling it the first floor, you said like plus one, because then the zero base you could go plus one, negative one, anything away from zero. Like that would make sense to me. Yeah. But calling it the first floor that implies that it's like the first one, but it's not. <laughs> you need a license to have a TV here. I mean, not much makes sense. Oh, you know, really, really. Wow. Yeah, you? That's TV license. Funny. No, yeah, TV that's a license. joke. That's a joke. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, and, and it's taken so seriously that um, you only need a TV license if you have like a satellite, if you're watching live TV, which obviously I don't do. I don't, the last time I watched the last live TV would have been decades ago because it's some old government thing they haven't okay. adapted with the times. So, so you have to go online and say, I don't need a TV license, and you fill in a stupid form. Oh, thing. you have to and fill out like, the form oh, to not right. have a TV okay. license. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone yeah. has to do it. You have, Otherwise, you have to pay your like, 100 quid a year TV license fine. Oh, they <laughs> fine you for having the license? They fine you if you don't have a TV license. Oh, shit. But if you say you don't need one, then randomly one day someone might knock on your door saying, we're here to check that, you, that you're not watching <laughs> off like a satellite right now i had it happen to me that's amazing you, holy you are, crap they're, they're not legally allowed in your house but i I had nothing to hide so i was like okay you can check i didn't even have like a satellite attached to my <laughs> that's house, so wow. absolutely anything, insane it, well that's very nice of you you let them in i know yes. yeah i'm just i'm not about <laughs> causing trouble you know i just wanted them to leave me alone <laughs> yeah but my granddad has refused bad. them so Do, so yeah they <laughs> They it, the license is automatic unless you refuse it. No, you you have to go out of your way to either say yes, I need one, and give them the money, or oh. say no, I do, don't need one, okay. and they'll come and check at some so, point. So since maybe. it's a license, do they ever refuse a license? Is there a reason why they would go? You're not allowed this license to a television. Well, I don't know why they call it a license. It's more of a tax, really. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it it doesn't make any sense, and they okay. failed to adapt it with the time. So now like... I thought that was a fucking meme. I thought if people no, said no, like, no, "Oh, you're a Brit bog lad, you got a license for your TV," I thought that was supposed to be yeah. like a commentary on how many things you need. I didn't think it was actually like a TV. License. No, no, it actually, That's... there genuinely is a TV. You're blowing license, my mind. With the idea being that the BBC is funded by the money that is raised by it, so you don't have ads on the BBC. We have or Crown like Corporations. That. We have the CBC, right? Like we have government-funded television mm -hmm. channels. We don't have a license for our TVs to fund it. it just oh, comes yeah, out of tax money. I'm not money. defending the TV license. Okay. Fuck the TV license. <laughs> I think it's really ridiculous and stupid. Um, and the UK deserves to be made fun of for such a ridiculous idea. 
Yeah. Uh, happy America Day, Ralph. It was America Day yesterday. Thanks. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yesterday was. At the time of this podcast being posted, I guess it depends. Mm -hmm. It'll be, well, like the 8th, right? I don't know. <laughs> It'll be sometime yeah, it in the future. Depends. Depends. Live yeah, in the present. In the future. Everything's in the past. It's just a lot of fireworks. This is a recording. Yeah, yeah so true, man. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Everything's the past. Yeah, Edgar Wright tweeted about um Synaptic Key. Oh, Edgar Wright? You see that? Oh, yeah, yeah. The fucking, what was it? Amazon Prime listed it as a comedy or something? Mm. Oh, yeah, but he's just like, yeah, classic. Yeah, what a great knee-slapping comedy. What was this question <laughs> you had, Alex? So, uh, seeing as we're basically on this topic of weird British things already, sure. and seeing as Source Spiral has a lot of pig imagery and pigs involved, do you guys know what, what pork scratchings are? Pork scratchings. Is that scratching. like a you can buy? Pork uh, scratchings. Are those pork rinds? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I guess you that's just call them something silly. We call them scratchings here. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna guess like jerky. <laughs> I guess that's not. No, pork rinds are good. Scratchings is what you. It's what you pick up in a, yeah. in a bar or uh, whatever. Uh, of course, it's the same thing. We just have a stupid name for just, it. Okay. There's some good ones in the States I can never find in Canada called Baconettes. Like, they, they have the regular Baconettes in Canada, but there's, like, a spicier one in the States that I really like, and it's like, mm -hmm. damn, I never find that in, here. In the, just the U.S.? A Baconette? What is that? I've never it's, even heard it's of It's a brand of like uh, pork rinds. Oh, it's just okay. Baconettes, or, I think. At least Baconettes, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it, it kind of explains okay. what it is. What is a scratching? I don't know the history of that one. I don't want to. I mean, a scratching is when you scratch your friend. You scratch their back. And in this case, you scratch the back of a pig. It's a pork scratching. A crunchy bag of fried pig skin. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. It's a normal thing. It's equivalent to sauce spiral. When do you eat that? Is that like a movie snack? Like, oh, Have you never had it's pork like rinds? It's like a pub snack. Oh, okay. No, not really. I don't really... They're fine. If you're on like keto, they're really good because yeah. they're like no carbs or whatever. But yeah, they're ta they, it's just oh, like, yeah. okay. just imagine if you like puffed up bacon fat or whatever, just like yeah. pig fat. Yeah, like I know what they are. And I haven't just... had like, it seems like there's really good ones. I had like the Utz ones. <laughs> mm. I don't even know what that is. It's like if you made, if you turned a pig into a crunchy styrofoam. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of weird, but I, I guess it's okay. I just kind rather sharp, eat chips. Or really something. hurts to yeah. eat. Yeah, it's weird. It's called scratchings. It's not, not though. <laughs> yeah, just over here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pork scratchings. Speaking of, that's pig a weird one. Ease. Yeah, like the pig. And we jigsaw. saw a spiral. <laughs> From the book, from the book. Yeah, I remember those days. Like, did you see Saw or have you saw? <laughs> you, I saw, did you saw, saw, saw like the other day. Did yeah. you see Saw? Fucking awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. Them's were the days. I saw Saw Spiral, and I don't know what you guys thought. You do but, know what we thought. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we kind of heavily we hinted that in the episode. previous well, episode. briefly, like recap. What did you? Okay, well, Alex and I hated it what did you what did you think really <laughs> hate it yeah well i didn't think it was very good no <laughs> and i like these movies i actually thought it was pretty bad it's i couldn't horrendous. get over the look of the movie i think that was the main thing it just doesn't look it just kind of looks like a like a cbs show like a drama <laughs> like really cheap digital yeah. camera like i didn't like the color oh, you know like like blue there's like a lot of blue and i, I don't know i just thought the movie looked very kind of cheap looking there are so uh, many people that are saying that this movie looks like super professional compared to the other films and i think that they were probably sucked <laughs> into the marketing or something because that's how they're marketing it and darren lynn bowsman is in interviews being like yeah i was like 25 when i directed saw two and saw three and i'm a more mature person now and so this is a real movie with real characters Characters and you actually care about them, but it's like he just fails, <laughs> fails on every level. That's, that's a little it's absolutely yeah. embarrassing, and that's exactly how they're marketing wow. it too, because they're like, it's not a Saw movie anymore. We're not releasing it at Halloween. This isn't even called Saw, or like Seven or something. I love Saw because I like, in the same way, I like Friday the Thirteenth, where it's a great encapsulation of like the early two thousands and horror. Uh, it's very gory. The, I think people just liked it at the time, and trying to recapture it now, it wouldn't work. I would so love tried it! tried to modernize it by going with this Gone Girl kind of thing, I guess with the cinematography. But yeah, I think they could do it. I think it. those Saw movies are really goofy, but people knew what they were, and at the time, I think 
exactly just accept that's it. Like, more than what could be up. said about this film it doesn't know what it is it thinks yeah. it's just doing something mm-hmm. like actually serious it thinks that it wrote really? characters that are like interesting or engaging or not one note chris rock thinks that he can <laughs> act seriously in the movie he can't darren lynn bowsman thinks that he made a movie <laughs> that looks professional and is like well directed like this movie has zero self-awareness and it's so fucking embarrassing but what but i, I what yeah. i would like to say about like whether or not saw could still work now the proof that it could work is the fact that people are still watching things like spiral and jigsaw right like the only mm-hmm. reason people yeah. are watching these newer incarnations where they do try to somewhat modernize them is because it's attached to the old Saw name, right? Even though they're kind of doing it, not really, because yeah. they're like, you know, they're marketing it as the book of Saw because it's still technically there. But, you know, like that's the only reason anybody saw it. If this was an original IP, no one would have watched this shit. Nobody would have watched it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's abandoned everything that has made it sore yeah. to begin with, but still like kind stupid, of hanging right. on to it. It's so embarrassing. I need two things from this franchise to be entertained by it. And that's one, Tobin Bell, and two, fun traps. <laughs> it's kind of all I'm asking for. That's all I really want. And just the stupid silliness of that is enough. But you don't get either of those things, really. Well, you get traps, but they're some of the most really forgettable, lazy ones, yeah. boring, sure. lazy traps that yeah. all framed around, I guess, like, they were like cops. It's all like punishing the police and this story of Chris uh-huh. Rock and uh, Samuel L. Jackson. And, you know, I was convinced that because the big question to me was, how are they going to replace Tobin Bell? Who's going to be the new Jigsaw equivalent? And I, I was convinced <laughs> that Sam Jackson was going to wind up being like the new Tobin Bell. And it was going to be like a huge Marvel MCU Chris <laughs> Rock versus Sam yeah. Jackson build up thing. Instead, it's, uh, I guess, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Um, the, the ultimate reveal is that. Max Minghella, Detective Will. Whoever that is. Someone. He's such a. I dropped my glasses. Now you will pay. (laughs) Oh, the twist is another thing you're waiting for in the Saw movies. And uh, that's the twist of this one. And you're just like, oh, really? That, that's the twist. You're almost waiting for another twist on top of it because you're like, that that seriously seriously can't be the reveal of this movie. Like, Mm -hmm. it's so bad. Like, the, the way they, they, make that character just disappear and they don't show his dead body oh yeah supposed to be dead. <laughs> it, turn, you're, it turns out you're supposed to believe that the one character <laughs> whose death that they didn't explicitly show <laughs> is actually mm-hmm. dead and not still alive doing things and then it's like mm-hmm. a reveal like oh you didn't see this one coming like holy fuck how lazy what a boring script yeah what a paint by numbers piece of garbage they unironically had a scene where chris rock was going i don't need a partner to like the police chief or whatever it's like <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. off like this is the most boring thing that's ever existed you took something that at least knew what it was and was interesting and unique and and was its own thing and you just tur- turned it into any garbage film student nonsense with a couple of traps in there like it it looks like it was made by like teenagers (laughs) (laughs) it does it looks really cheap chris rock's dialogue his his like stand-up routine he goes through it's even like a twilight joke yeah, don't drain the phone battery watching yeah, Twilight. Right. So what movie is this one like what this came out in 2021 Well, because they needed some levity right but they did it, yeah it, <laughs> I don't, it, it just, just feels like sucked. he is doing like ad lib like it, he it's just chris rock on the screen and in they a left Saul it in for some reason yeah yeah he just left it in out of all of the directors that have directed saw movies darren lynn basman is not anywhere near my favorite <laughs> right get kevin gruder get james Wan, and then the rest <laughs> fucking leave him you know we don't need yeah, david hackle we don't need darren lynn basman was there another one? I don't even know. Maybe they should have just stopped making them. No, keep it going. We need to have a <laughs> reveal. Stop. We'll go crazier. Yeah. I really like the continuing story Bell. of the first seven Saw movies. It was like a soap opera, and then it just stopped. And Jigsaw, they, I guess they're trying to p- put the pieces kind of in place, but it doesn't fit as well. I miss the whole goofy subplot with the with the police detective. And I miss everything mm-hmm. about the all that nonsense. Films. Jigsaw's wife. Yeah, like, that was awesome. <laughs> that's the best part. And then and yeah, the traps. You know, that's they've the already highlight. done the whole copycat killer thing as well. So it's just nothing original, no new takes in this movie at all. Yeah, yeah. and so, he so it never pointless. justifies why he's doing it in a saw 
way. Like it, mm-hmm. it never justifies yeah. why he's copying Jigsaw. He's just got a beef with Chris Rock <laughs> and his dad. <laughs> yeah. like, like there's no reason why any of this had to happen or why they had to be traps. Like, did you want people to be able to escape any of them? Is that like a part where they all inescapable? Like, why do that? You could just kill them. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't justify yeah. anything. It's a very dull film. Yeah, like their spin on the old ideas, for example, like the, their new version of the Saw puppet with the new voice and everything. Like, that was it is so voice. much worse. It is so bad, yeah. that new voice. Like, I don't get, you're trying to do this more grounded, like visually, I guess you want it to be this serious thing you're going for the serious story but then like it's the same you've written it like the same stupid way you have like the previous ones you put like no Uh extra effort into this concept at all it it just seems like when you read like the wikipedia and you read a bit about how into it chris rock was and it seems like this whole project was basically just spurred on from him talking to the higher ups uh, over there and them just getting this project off the ground because he wanted to take his career in a different direction guys I know what to do yeah. with the Saw franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Way and to go. If it was that easy, it's a shame someone else didn't do it. Fuck, give me <laughs> the Saw franchise. I'll write something funny. Yeah, like Chris Rock, even when I heard him announced. But, you know, people were hesitant when Heath Ledger was announced as <laughs> in yeah. The Dark Knight, right? Yeah. So it's like, oh, so maybe actually Chris Rock will be really good in this movie. And I heard some good things about him. But yeah, he didn't really do much. I thought his jokes were corny. Yeah, I I found it difficult to distinguish when he was joking. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he was trying to do serious things at the same time. But every time he yells, it's like he's doing stand-up because he's not a great actor. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I thought he was hilarious. I I laughed a lot. It was so so sanitized and lame. It wasn't as intense as those other Saw movies. There were a lot of jump scares. A lot of uh, I guess we're going through a phase of horror. Squeal jump scares. Yeah, where they're just a lot of editing. Taking it light. Jump scares. It was yeah. just him sitting in his car and he starts screaming. I hope we go back to that era where it's like really violent again, <laughs> like mm-hmm. the Saw movies, really goofy traps with well, just well, like tons of, the of fun blood. of the previous movies with it. When someone was in a trap, there was kind of a way they could get out of it. Not fairly, but you know, it was like a challenge, something they could do that would leave them damaged at some point. They could get out yeah. the trap. Um, that was like the, the hook or whatever. But I don't think anyone ever escapes one in this movie. It's just because that was one of the things the previous movie did where someone was setting up traps that were impossible to escape, which was like defeating. Yeah, what's the point? The point? Of, yeah, I, what is the point of this movie? Yeah, <laughs> they tried it, to hide it even, like the delay. It, it feels it. so fucking like just forced. Like, they clearly didn't plan this out from the beginning. This isn't, like, a vision of... What? Saw that was in the beginning. Like, oh, yeah, I, th- I envisioned Saw Spiral 20 years in the future. It's not like Twin Peaks or something. It's just, like, so thrown together. I didn't like the story. I thought it was lazy. It's it's paint-by-numbers nonsense. It's the most boring mm-hmm. fucking thing that could ever be created and called a Saw movie or from the book of Saw. Like, what's even the audience for this? Like, am I the audience? Because I thought I thought it was boring, and I thought it looked like shit. the audience is a handful of people on the Saw subreddit that are so super fans that they would never admit that they saw something they didn't like. <laughs> but then they should just make it a bunch of like violent traps for two hours. I I wouldn't give a shit. That's what people want to see. Yeah, this yeah, is just dumb. Like it's just lazy fact- and like it's just boring. The fact they felt the need to kind of reboot the story makes it seem like they felt they'd written themselves into a corner and needed to refresh it. It's like, what? They're cowards. This isn't refreshing anything. Fucking yeah. Saw 3 wrote itself into a corner and they kept going with four more. <laughs> <laughs> okay? They're fucking cowards. Those were successful films. Saw 7 was successful too, and they decided to puss out because Paranormal Activity made a bit more money than them. It was like, oh, it's not profitable anymore. You still made like... A shit ton of money off of a movie that cost nothing to make, okay? You still made money off of Saw 7. Don't pretend you didn't. (laughs) They shot themselves in the foot by calling it the final chapter. They could have just called it Saw Saw 7 and then take a break. I mean, to give Jigsaw credit, actually, I liked how they brought Tobin Bell back into it. (laughs) And it was actually okay compared to this. You know, at least it was marketed as Tobin Bell. 
There's no reason yeah, why they <laughs> should have stopped. They could keep going. They I could like continue from Saw 7 right now. They can keep going with Tobin Bell. There's no reason why they couldn't. Twin brother, please, Lionsgate, listen to us. <laughs> Tobin Bell is like in his Twin 70s. Brother, you got to use him while you can, okay? People want him. Bring him back. He's got a twin brother. He never died in Saw 3. Make it goofy. Nobody gives a shit, okay? You think the original movies weren't goofy? What do you think people want? Those were successful. Yeah. What are you doing? Why are you making it not like the successful ones? That's so stupid. Right. It just doesn't I'm make so sense mad. to me. Yeah, because <laughs> at least the last one did have the funny, like, what the fuck are you doing with the, like, time thing? It was just showing time, different timelines. And you just yeah. have, like, no way of knowing. That's funny. That's so stupid and ridiculous. <laughs> it's more <laughs> complicated really than Primer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's just no way you could assume that was going to be what was going to happen. But here it's so obvious. It does. It is paint by numbers. It's just fucking nothing going on. And you got like CG glass flying around in the traps. And it's just so, so removed from what made this franchise good. I mm -hmm. like laughing at it, but man, there was, there was nothing to this. I love the, the contradiction between marketing your film and pretending like it's like this more mature <laughs> version of saw like oh this is about the characters while simultaneously having the editor trying attempting to recreate a lot of the weird editing choices of the first saw movies where it's like yeah ooh, fast zoom and like pa 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 loud noise and <laughs> brightness and like it fails because it's not the same editor, Kevin Gruder. This is the only film he didn't work on, so they just had some other guy try to like pretend that, that that that's what was happening, and it just fails miserably. And it also makes it look a bit more juvenile, but it doesn't know what it is, right? It fits in the other Saw movies because it knows it's juvenile. It's fucking gore torture porn, mm. right? It knows that it's stupid. <laughs> this has no idea yeah, what it and is. And a soap opera. Yeah, There's bring a lot it back. Of things going on. Bring yeah. back the gore soap opera. Have characters rise from the fucking grave. Pull up Friday the 13th, part six. Have lightning strike the grave yeah. and just a fist come out of the fucking ground. Okay? I don't care. Make Jigsaw immortal. Do whatever you can. It. Bring him just back. Was torture porn really a term back then? I don't really yeah, think so. They, they might have wanted to steer away from making that like a popular franchise. But, I mean, they didn't have to completely remove the balls of Saw. And that's kind of what this is. It's just not interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not even Saw. Yeah. Like, yeah, the, the traps were the best part. It was fun. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> in the other Saw films, there were like a shit ton of flashbacks because they killed the main character in the third movie. So obviously there had to be and there had to be a lot of explanations. <laughs> so, yeah. In this film, there's a shit ton of flashbacks for literally no reason. Like, there, there's nothing really we gain from all those flashbacks. It's just wasting time and they go on for so fucking long. And it's like, oh, Sam Jackson and the he has a relationship with Chris Rock, and their acting just sucks. It really does. Like they're not good in it. Yeah, I don't believe their characters. Everything's just, so, just so stupid. On, on flashbacks for so long, they probably just forgot they didn't actually need them in the movie. Yeah, and for a film that's trying to break away from the franchise and do its own thing in the universe, like fuck off. You can, you have no understanding of like what you would need and not need for something to be different. You have no understanding of what you should be using. It's just the one of the most one of the least self aware movies I've ever seen in my entire life, and it's absolutely fucking disgusting and horrendous. And I'll watch it again so I can make a fucking review on it because holy fuck, this is like this is one of the most infuriating movies ever. And uh, I've I've done That's every bad. other Saw movie, so I guess I'm obligated. But yeah, we'll see what happens with me trying sure. to get better from my injuries. Sure. Uh, one out of ten. Fuck this movie. It's garbage. Piece of shit. Yeah, yeah it is awful. Um, I, I didn't get quite as viscerally annoyed by it. I, I don't know why. I, sh I, re I think I should have. Really. <laughs> um, but I, I was laughing at it because I just thought it was. Oh my god! Just such a bad concept. Uh, and and it was so short. I just felt like, oh, okay. I guess that's over. It's like a wafer thin mint. It's just nothing. There's no substance. You just forget about it the second it ends. Um, I think it's a one star for me. I was laughing at some of the traps. There's basically nothing, 
nothing memorable but this rolling my eyes like crazy when every other word sam jackson says is motherfucker it's like really reddity you know? <laughs> yeah yeah that was so thrown in like just like, oh he's sam just jackson just rest. have him curse like yeah fuck because yeah, <laughs> that's why he's there I, I was waiting for it to go crazy i was waiting i was waiting for the soreness to come back in some way and it, it would have been cool if he was jigsaw then i would have been more with yeah. it but I re- it feels I like it was really pr- premature yeah yeah, yeah. but no nah, one star awful I would give it a one star too. Do the letterboxed rating. Mm. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, one out of five. Yeah. 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 Not just, good. Uh, Not good. Even by Saw standards. I like the rest <laughs> of them too. I just noticed another note in my fucking thing that made me so mad when I remembered it right now. It's like they, mm. they didn't have the Saw music and then they used it at the very end, not during the reveal, but after everything had already been revealed. Which is the That's wrong right. way to yeah, u- why use it if you're not going to use it properly. Yeah. There's yeah, a single really context in which that music has been used in every other film. So to bring it back, the implication is that you're trying to recapture or at least provide some nostalgia for people for the other films. Mm-hmm. You don't even know how it was used. You're not a fan of the franchise. Darren Lynn Bowsman, you're not yeah. a fan of the franchise, yeah, Chris bad. Rock. If you are, that's embarrassing. It's fucking embarrassing. You obviously didn't give a shit. Darren Lynn Bowsman in interviews, he's like, he's saying like, oh yeah, we actually had in the script, we wrote insert trap here and we came up with them at the end. Really? So it's like they didn't matter. Yeah. He doesn't care. Uh, There's no reason why he should have been there. He was. They were just like, oh, who's directed Saw movies that people like? It? People like the <laughs> second and third one. Let's get him because James Wan obviously wasn't going to do this shit, right? So they had to get fucking Darren Lynn Basman, who obviously doesn't care about the franchise and tries to downplay the, the ones he was involved in by saying, I was 25 when I made those. So like, you don't even give a shit. You don't care. Give it to somebody who cares. Fuck all of yeah. you. That's really bad. Okay. It's stupid. Yeah, from that perspective, that is making me more annoyed. But... Yeah. Lower your rating. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's terrible. It's a terrible movie. Yeah. All right. We saw Pixar's... New one. You say the title, Ralph. You can do it better. Luca. Guadagnino. <laughs> film. <laughs> it started with like Un Film by Pixar. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. it's, I don't, I, it's okay. It was an okay movie. Oh, was it? I didn't think it was a terrible movie like the other one. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it was as bad as Star Spiral either. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of difficult. Yeah. You're a little more harsh on Luca, Adam? Um, I don't know how you were. I It's a. Uh, let's spoil the shit out of it, I guess. I didn't like it very much. <laughs> yeah, we can get into spoilers. It's been out a while, and it's a kid's movie. Like, And also, yeah, nobody should care audience. about the spoilers, because it's a very predictable, boring plot anyway. Yeah, not it's not one of Pixar's best. I would Certainly say it's not. not as good as Up, or Ratatouille, or any of the Toy Story movies, which I just rewatched, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wow, those are amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, to watch Luca compared to that, it's like, eh... It's it's very oh, middling. I, I don't under, I don't understand the fish part. Like I I you know there's like this whole kind of fish society underwater, and then they kind of go on the surface of this little town in Italy, and I'm like okay I, I, like that doesn't that's not that interesting like yeah <laughs> you know uh, it's not that creative I don't understand, and then they have to win a bike race. Yeah, yeah, there's the Ralph bit. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, elements just thrown into this film that don't seem to match well with each other. Yeah, it was very weird. A lot of gags with them having to like, you know, blend in with this town, but like a bunch of H2O would fly on them. <laughs> Buckets of water, mm-hmm. like fucking, I don't know, they would start raining, like shit like that. And it's like there's tons of gags. What happens when like it's that. high humidity? What happens? There's water in the air, dumb fucks. <laughs> That's not my issue. Yeah, just, yeah. Just the concept me. isn't the strongest. <laughs> it's supposed to be like a love letter to Miyazaki, your Porto Porco Rosso's and whatnot. Sure. It's more easy. The stakes are kind of low, and you know it's playful and fun. Right. Um, but I don't know when it does fall into. Oh, we got to do this race, and there's this villain who's like a, he's a like bully the adult version of the. <laughs> Well, he's like the kid version of uh, the villain from Ratatouille. I thought the character design was so similar with the, the yeah. faces, but yeah, you were saying the 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 way 
they are kind of fish, and it's a literal fish out of water <laughs> story. <laughs> yeah, um, right. And yeah. it's like, okay, so the, you have half Italy? this movie, and you spend this time. <laughs> yeah, you, you have you set up this this world, and Sasha and Barack Cohen even comes in playing this. It's like he seems like he might be like a villain character or something with the independent eyes, the translucent body. Maybe they're going to go to the deep at some point for like the low point in the movie. I don't know. Why is this underwater? But then it just kind of boils down into this. It's the only thing that really gives the movie urgency. Yeah, exactly. And they didn't explore it more. I thought it would be more part of like the third act. They would have to go down there and there would be some kind of grander stakes. But... It, it was just that bike race. Oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just the concepts. Like he he herds sheep underwater. It's like what? yeah. I was really into the the look of when they were humans when they were in Italy, and I wish the movie was just about three kids in Italy and they didn't feel the need to yeah, show the fancy element. Exactly, that kind would have of, been yeah. a bold, like different take for Pixar instead of having to rely on all the usual tricks they do because. To be honest, a, a lot of it didn't even feel that Pixar-y to me. It just kind of felt like a Disney 3D animated movie. It's, you mm -hmm. know, kind of kind of yeah, forgettable. It is like Wreck-It Ralph with like the cart thing and just like the racing. And his whole like motivation, it's all about like he wants a Vespa, which, you know, represents freedom and escape. But he's, he's already in the ocean, which is like the most liberating, freeing place imaginable. Yeah. I, I feel like... <laughs> It just doesn't really make sense to he me. Wants um, more. <laughs> I want to go. It just where wasn't the a big release. Are. You know, this kind of went by the wayside when it came out. I was like, "Oh, Luca's out." When Cruella came out, I had to pay thirty dollars for that shit. This was free. <laughs> yeah, true. And I don't know if it's some deal or something, but you know, it felt just kind of like an afterthought. And I don't know why, because you know, I I thought the character of Luca was fine, and and like, mm -hmm. well, actually, I didn't really like the voice acting that much. <laughs> Maybe I should take that back. I thought the 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 lead kids, who, who was the lead in this? Fucking Luca. Uh, Jacob. Jacob. Tremblay. They yeah. could have gotten like two no name Italian kids, and I think that would have been better. Yeah, Jacob Tremblay been and better. Jack Dylan Grazer. Like they were fine, but they could have just got like two random Italian kids and. I don't know. <laughs> I don't Sasha know. Sasha Baron Jacob Cohen? Has yeah, ever like, who been, even like, was he? Actor. Like, Sasha Baron Cohen <laughs> didn't even stand out to me. Yeah, because it's such a throwaway thing. Yeah, Jim Gaffigan. Like, yeah, but no one really brought anything to it where I was like, wow, that was a great character. <laughs> I actually like the Fisherman dad probably the best out of anyone in the movie. Yeah. Because they yeah, come across, design. like, this girl uh, who played the. Is that is that Emma Berman? Played the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, like I like that character just fine, but they like come across her and they like go across and, and like to to her like apartment, I guess, and and she's like with her dad and she cooks some spaghetti, like that oh, one yeah. was okay. Like I like that stuff. <laughs> it was just yeah, like I straightforward. Like yeah, I don't know. Was it trying to be like call me by your name? <laughs> Apparently, that a, a lot of people think it was trying to be like that, and there's a lot Luca of Luca Guardino. You just said his name, and so then people also try to say that this is like maybe a gay sim sim symbolic movie, like an allegory. I guess you'd mm -hmm. take that way. I really just saw it as them, their friends. Like I don't, I didn't see yeah, it that way. Really. But I mean, like if you want to see it that way, the, I, apparently do the, do what you want, the director <laughs> or somebody attached to the movie was asked about it, and they were like, no. Yeah. Which no. I mean, if it's Disney, they're probably gonna say no anyway. So yeah. who really knows what it's trying to be? I don't it's, know if it's, it's trying to really capitalize matter. off of like. Oh, it's a it's like a metaphor for uh, pe being gay and in the closet. I don't, people in I the didn't town will that. find out yeah. who you are, and like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think it's perfectly valid to interpret it that way. I I don't see anything wrong with that. I just think it's a boring as fuck movie that doesn't serve any purpose, and all the elements that yeah. come together <laughs> to make this film don't fit with each other at all. They're just randomly thrown in. A lot of this is super, super fucking derivative. Like, there's how many elements that we're saying that are just like, oh, this feels like another movie. This feels like this movie. That's what this movie is. It doesn't serve its own purpose. It doesn't justify its own existence. It's it's a Kinda. nothing movie. It's just so fucking forgettable mm -hmm. and boring. The humor. I, I, I really feel like their humor has gone downhill so much. Very hit or miss, yeah. You were saying, um, Ralph, that you were re-watching some of their classics, and I've gone through a couple recently too, and I'm just I was blown away by how genuinely funny they are. They're clever, they're witty. Very quotable. This, Yeah, Luca's more, it yeah. just feels like it's way more for kids, for young kids. 
Uh huh. The elements of the story just didn't fit together right. I think that yeah. was my biggest problem. Even the emotional beats of the story, that's what Pixar is good at. Like, it, they really mm -hmm. get your heartstrings. And here, I guess, Luca's, like, emotional turmoil is that he wants to go to school at some point. Yeah, what the fuck? And, and <laughs> like, it just wasn't, it just wasn't resonating with me. Like, at the end of the movie, when he gets on the train and yeah. they're playing, like, that swelling music, I'm like, Very this doesn't, unsatisfying. It, wasn't, it wasn't set up mm -hmm. that well. Like, nothing was. It, yeah. it was just, like, in the middle of the movie, they're like, oh, and Instead of one of Vespa, I want to go to school. Like fine, <laughs> okay, literally fine. Yeah, like, That's the end of the movie. It says fine. There was nothing early in the movie where I got like maybe maybe I was just missing out on it. This movie's too smart for me. But like, yeah. he should have just been more of a curious kind of person, and I don't know, wanted to pursue education in that like sea world he was in, <laughs> and mm -hmm. maybe he was shunned for some reason. Like there needs to be something else going on. They were trying like, to do too many things know. at once and didn't properly explore. It, it any just didn't element. feel like it meshed well. Yeah, like it, they yeah. should have worked on the story a little more. Like maybe another few drafts of the script. Like I'm mm -hmm. not telling Pixar what to do, but there was just like all these I mean, weird. Like why was it in Italy? It just felt yeah. like okay. It's why like, were they it's like Coco, people? where they're like they're like <laughs> centered on a culture. Like yeah, okay, here's the setting. What, what can we do with it? And it's not about a story. It's yeah. not about telling a story. Even Coco fit better, like the Day of the Dead, like that's actually a thing. Yeah, and Coco's, the skeletons and all that. Better. I'm like, that that was awesome. I like Coco better than this. I think. Yeah, that's a good I, story. I, I, I don't hate this movie. What if instead of like being fish people, they were pasta people, and they had to hide their spaghettis? <laughs> <laughs> then that could have worked. Yeah, something that would like have been that. Good. <laughs> yeah, uh, you how know, do you guys actually feel about the character designs when they are water fish monsters? Because I didn't love them. Fucking boring. No I didn't either. Normally, it's something boring. I can point out with Pixar and say that I, I really enjoy their character designs for that kind of thing. Like, yeah. I really watch Finding Monsters Nemo, Inc. It's Underwater. Yeah, Monsters, Inc. Some really creative oh, like, stuff in wow, there. Wow, like, here. all those monsters look amazing. Even Monsters University. Like, you could look at any one of those monsters mm -hmm. and you're like, wow, that even, you know, even though the movie's not great, at least I can admire the look of and the design of the monsters exactly. in this movie. Yeah. Um, and this didn't really, yeah, I did not like the look of the fish people. Or, or even Toy Story, you know. I like the look of the Toy Story characters. Very iconic. Mm -hmm. What's funny is this is them clearly testing the waters for doing different kinds of character designs because everything always has the same sort of Pixar-y look to it, except this film, where you can tell that there's like a bit of effort put into making this look distinct. And now they're probably not going to do that ever again because they're going to go like, well, nobody, <laughs> people didn't really like this one. So obviously this was the issue. They're going to do the same thing they did with Princess <laughs> and the Frog, Disney dumb fucks. They're going to go, oh, yeah. nobody wants to watch 2D anymore. So, you know, it's it couldn't ha possibly yeah, they already be the story. Didn't have faith in couldn't it possibly, just by yeah. releasing it this way. Yeah. You, you know, you just you by not charging $30 for it. You didn't it. give it your good they writers. They didn't give it a chance. Or your attention or your, yeah. you know, clearly this is a subpar story that you gave it. So mm -hmm. what were you expecting, really? You you destined it to fail. Well, that's kind of what The Lion King was, right? Th weren't they putting their th all their bets on like another film, and then Lion King was kind of the one they didn't think Yeah, was but the people making well. Lion King mm -hmm. were actually fucking putting their heart and soul into it, were actually passionate about it. Yeah, and that's more what Luca should have been. Like, <laughs> they should have, I don't know. <laughs> There's just a lot of elements I feel didn't come together. Nothing. I would have liked. Just explore a bit There's more. I want to know why he's so obsessed with not wanting to be a fish. You know? Yeah. I thought they were going to do more with that. <laughs> I thought they were going to do more with, like, yeah. the conflict of him having left. But then he comes back, and it's like, oh, my, you know, my aunt did it, and they're kind of mad at me, but we're cool. And there was, like, nothing really done with that. <laughs> I was expecting so much mm -hmm. more, and they just... Nothing is properly developed, and they have too many things that they're trying to do at once, and they just barely skim the surface of what they could possibly write or explore with every single one of these situations or concepts or characters, and it's just like, at the end, you're left with nothing. There was nothing to attach myself onto. Nothing mattered. Mm -hmm. I didn't give a shit about the ending. I didn't give a shit about him going to school. I didn't give a shit about, like, the fucking bike race or the Vespa or the bully <laughs> or, like, the parents or the train or, like, anything. Like, I was just like, wow, this was annoying. I don't care what happens to these characters. Please die. Please yeah. end. <laughs> please. Yeah, I wasn't thinking connect. please die, but it isn't. Yeah, it's just not interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm shitting on the movie a lot. There's some things I like about it. Uh, I guess we should get into. I don't know. Alex, do you have anything that you liked about it? <laughs>
I, I do I do like the the character design of when they're humans uh, and the look of when they are on land. Yeah. I think that is really solid and could be the base of a, a fun movie. I think all the Italy stuff looks great. Fucking do something with the it. The animation's really great. <laughs> Why are they even in Italy? They didn't do anything. That, that is the thing, though. It does come back to that story. And I mean, normally these Pixar movies, when they get it right, they can play me like a fiddle, but I didn't, I didn't really feel anything from this movie apart from just ogling the animation you know that's like all they are mm-hmm. with these kind of movies I, I i liked it more than than onward I'd, I'd put it above onward but it's kind of that tier of pixar movie for me where it's just like yeah the concept isn't that strong the characters are kind of weak super forgettable doesn't really ring like a pixar movie used to yeah again like i just it's nothing that yeah. really rings out in my mind about this like well, I, when it finished, I did, and reading that it is trying to channel this Miyazaki kind of energy, you can really see it, like in the shape of the mouths and the like the the design of the cat and the parents and stuff. It is in there, but it's not a Miyazaki movie. And I yeah. saw on your Twitter, Adam, you <laughs> yep. you recommended that that article that made me laugh, like implying yeah. that oh, have they, have they nailed the formula better than Miyazaki? And it's like, please. That's, that's such a ridiculous Pixar concept. Pixar do Miyazaki better than Miyazaki. Yeah. <laughs> like this is as good as Spirited Away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, no, <laughs> it's not. Uh, it is kind of a letdown. It's not as bad as The Good Dinosaur. No, not like as that, bad as the which good I also dinosaur. recently watched. <laughs> oh, it's not like that. <laughs> I thought the character designs were very endearing. I enjoyed the look of the movie just fine, except when they were fish. I thought all that was unnecessary. <laughs> Well, I guess it is necessary for the story. It just it needed to be integrated better into the story. I don't know if it is necessary for the story. <laughs> yeah, you can still have a movie about like a cart race. You got to make it for kids. You can't just have them in the Italy. It feels like a short or something that's been yeah. extended. Like Pixar, you, Pixar can't make a movie about like an African American music teacher. He has to have the fucking Inside Out souls. You know, like they would they would never the make cat. like a grounded film. <laughs> You know, it feels like that's the formula, and that's the part of the formula that's not really working for me. Is like this other mystical element, yeah, where they, and it mm-hmm. they clearly to, didn't it, need but to it's, be because it always feels shoehorned in, yeah. Like, there's some executive going, Okay, well, where's the part where they become uh, a, like a cute thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah like a cute yeah. blob where with part a where they turn big eyes and a smile, like <laughs> where the did, Ken? they clearly ride or die just on the story, the concepts they pick. Because it's, this, it's like yeah. the same problem with Cars, isn't it? Where just the concept is so dumb and bad. That it almost <laughs> defeats it before you even get into the story. What if Cars were alive? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get the appealing to the kids' fantasy. Like, you know, kids love Cars. Kids love monsters. Mm-hmm. Kids love superheroes. But yeah, it's but just they like don't they're love loving Italians, Cars. So we there there should have been in... something a little more clever. <laughs> I always thought they could have made like a really good racing movie with just like a yeah. you know about humans and they drive cars. Oh, maybe the cars can be personified in some way. But yeah, yeah like yeah, that would have worked. you know, they, there's these living cars, and I guess it sells toys great, but it just doesn't work as a story as well. Like the fucking Tomato character, or whatever. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I would prefer no this to Cars too. Yeah, but they had no faith eventual. in Luca, even though Luca is definitely better than some of the other things they've put more faith into. <laughs> Yeah. Like the live action Lion King. <laughs> like I would much rather show someone this. Like this is like at yeah. least fun and this is less lighthearted, well animated, more passion. The Miyazaki thing, uh it at least is trying to be inspired by something like with passion behind it, and that's good. Mm-hmm. It's not inspired by crap. Uh it was just mainly the the emotional beats were not as strong as I expect from a pixar movie but maybe it's not maybe i'm not the audience for this kind of thing anymore you know i've been watching every pixar movie for like it's it's your fault and it's like maybe yeah it is my fault maybe it's just time to move on like these kids these are just movies for stupid kids i think they could be trying (laughs) that's no i I think that and then i like go and watch the incredibles and like hang on a minute well, yeah, that's what like Toy Story's masterpiece. Yeah, a person it, who didn't grow up it with makes those you reconnect with your child. Still like mm-hmm. them more. Yeah, I love Toy Story. It's probably that might be one of the best series. I think it is the best series of movies ever because it makes me like reconnect with my childhood. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, these these toys are a metaphor for Andy, you know, 
coming to terms with his childhood and whatever and, and losing it and moving on <laughs> it's yeah. much more interesting than anything going on here <laughs> luca i don't know luca. i actually liked onward better because onward actually i i enjoyed for like really? i don't know less than half of it onward fell apart near oh, in the second okay. half i was cut, like onward was fine in the first half i was like oh this is you know well how about cars it. too um <sighs> I don't Cars remember that better? if I saw Cars 2. Tokyo. Remember that? No. <laughs> yeah, it's like Wasabi. Just that alone makes it's like Luke a spy better. movie. It's a spy movie. Oh. Yeah, like that was stupid as hell. Yeah, Why terrible. make it a spy movie? <laughs> so I mean, they could have been a series of really good just racing movies like Rocky or something yeah. with boxing. But they're just fucking stupid. They just <laughs> And then they went off off the you know, rails. I don't know, because like, like that's when they went really a off movie... the rails. Yeah. <laughs> that's like cars 2 or something i can i can look at that and be like that's not for me this is for children who really love cars or something but i look at a movie like luca i'm like who's yeah. this for <laughs> like you're not gonna get like some super fans of luca right. even if they're children right there you might get some kids that enjoy it because it's on right now and then forget about it later but you're not gonna have this like they're not gonna sell luca toys like the, they sell cars toys you know no. Like nobody's gonna buy a Luca toy. Right, that's the sad thing. Like this is just so. This is disposable. a better movie than Cars, but Cars sells more merchandise because it's just that I guess Cars. You know, they, kids can play with the Cars. Mm -hmm. They like that more. That's why toy Story sells well, obviously, because it's a bunch of toys. Mm. <laughs> Monsters Inc. sells well. <laughs> like I don't know. There are also characters. Just, that uh, you can't. You can't loved, do yeah. up toys. Anyone want a Carl toy or a <laughs> Russell toy? <laughs> they got the dog. Yeah. Yeah, you can have the dog. Those movies were just so much better. They were just so interesting. Uh, three out of ten for me. Oh. It's uh, fucking pointless. Damn. I was thinking more three out of five. Oh, great. Like the letterbox rating. Yeah, I shit on a lot. It's fine. <laughs> it's a fine yeah, it movie. It is fine. Slightly above fine because the animation's cute. I'm pretty much in line with you, Ralph. I think it might be slightly lower. I do have it rated as a three star out of five, or I might bump it down to two and a half. But I do, I think I have Onward as two and a half, so I'd have to put that slightly lower, I think. I, think <laughs> for a I have to it. watch Onward. I tried, I fell asleep. Well, that's I the thing, like the idea of like... rewatching Onward and Luca to figure out which one I prefer is oh, such a good like, double oh, feature. I'm, I'm just Don't never going to do that. So <laughs> yeah. that in and of itself kind of speaks. Uh, I just, I want to be, I want to see something better from Pixar than this. Um, I want to see them push push it a bit more. Do something with the characters you haven't, you haven't seen before. Don't rely on these formulas as heavily. You know, like if if you want to make a Miyazaki type movie, like really truly embrace that idea and give us something on the level instead of the kind of half assed bit Wreck It Ralph, bit Miyazaki, bit <laughs> Finding Nemo. I don't know. It's just a mess little of mermaid. concepts that doesn't come together for me. Yeah, a Little Mermaid. Yeah, Finding Nemo. Yeah, I want to be a human. Yeah bit of call me by your do name. anything yeah <laughs> fucking he's just like on land and then it's pretty funny. learns how to walk and then it's fine yeah, it's cute i guess it is cute. it wasn't the animation's nice <laughs> it wasn't even cute nice water animation water droplets i don't even know oh yeah all that couldn't even tell you yeah they, they've got that stuff nailed down their movies look really good yeah. the lighting and like the hair and all that I was that never stuff, taken aback by any of the animation. Even Toy Story 4, I was like, okay, th these are the shots where you're just showing off. Like where it was like Toy Story in the rain or whatever. Great. Like Toy Story, like holy yeah. crap. I was like, I remember just saying I was never going to see that you, film. So you, you saw that recently, didn't you? Yeah, I, I was never going to see it because I was so connected to that third one. But eventually mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, let me give it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, the animation looks much better in that than Luca. It, it is. There's the animation on those like kind of uh, puppet dolls. And yeah. that looked really good. They're kind of the mm -hmm. antagonists of the movie. But that's like their main IP. So they put all right, their resources right. and best animators best and best story. writers on them. Yeah. Uh, uh, Toy Story 4 looks great for sure. Yeah. When you go back to Toy Story 1, Woody looks fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the humans look pretty wacky. <laughs> yeah, the humans look wacky, but like Toy Story, uh, like I mean, uh, Woody is just like when he's laughing, he looks like a crazy oh, madman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it works fine. <laughs> like, it works like for that, that movie. Like that's yeah, like that's the only thing. Toy Story two looks much better. Toy Story three like like looks good. Four looks so good. It made me think like Toy Story doesn't even need to be 
a animated movie. It could just be live action. Oh, the <laughs> John Favreau the toys. treatment. Get him on board. That's that's what they could do, and that's probably what they oh, will yeah. do at some yeah. point. I mean, film it like a documentary. But that's how good. I mean, I'm trying to give credit to the animators. Like it looked so good. Like the animation on Woody. Like compared to the first one, when like Woody was holding the door closed, when like a dog was like attacking him, like it's not realistic at all. Because like mm -hmm. Woody, he's like made of felt, like he would have no weight on him. But like in Toy Story four, he moved like, like you know, kind of the material he was made out of. His arms would swing a certain way, and mm -hmm. it, it was a lot of like really good attention to detail, shit like that. Yeah, the animation's always great. Like I, I like watching the movies just for that. You know, they clearly put a lot of thought into that stuff. I just wish they would put more thought into, like, yeah. the story in this. The animation is usually thought, the best part. I guess right from the get-go, they're especially. like, Luca, this is, like, a half-assed idea. Let's just dump it on Disney+. Plus. And they put no faith into it. And it could have been something much better. Because there is potential here. And I like the idea of making a Pixar movie in Italy. It's just like, why are there mermaids? What, a bike race? <laughs> like, okay. The, the drama aspect, I guess, is making it more grounded is fun. The, the timeline I mean, of Pixar films, yeah. the animation gets better and the story gets worse. Kind of. switcheroo. <laughs> just about. Why couldn't it just be a straightforward drama just about Italy? Yeah, just humans, no fishes. But just humans. Yeah. Why can't they just make Cars 4 and set it in Italy? I mean, <laughs> you joke, we'll probably get that. They make the money, I'm not going to tell them what to do. There is a uh, recommendation of a film from Ralph. and Oh, yeah, we're up to this. By, yeah, let's do it. Da -da -da -da. It was a movie. It's a movie I recommended. Spoilers yep. for a movie almost famous from the year 2000, directed by Cameron Crowe. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen anything from Cameron Crow, like anything else. Okay. Vanilla Sky. Oh, Vanilla Sky. I've seen Vanilla Sky. That's it. He's got some some classics, I guess, but although I think mm -hmm. this is the only one I've seen, actually. I, I'm we bought a very zoo. aware of his other films and what they are, <laughs> but... I haven't seen Aloha. Oh, I don't really know much about that one. That one's not so good. That one kind of got bad reviews. Did you watch the... Theatrical or director's cut for this film? For this for this movie? For like th this recording? I think I watched the director's cut. Okay. I think so. Yeah. And did you watch the I've theatrical or directors before? No, I accidentally watched the extended version. Accidentally. Um, myself. Uh. Yeah, I I realized about an hour and forty five minutes in. I was like, yeah, this should be wrapping up about now, but this doesn't feel like it's even close to wrapping up. Then I looked at the timeline and there was like an hour left. Yeah. Oops. I did check the differences though on the on the Amazon Prime one after. Mm -hmm. The yeah, the theatrical I, I one is just two the, hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would have preferred that one, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The director's cuts two hours forty two. It's a pretty big difference. What were what were mm -hmm. the uh different scenes? Because I I read on Reddit or something that it the director's cut helps to more thoroughly explore things closer to the beginning of the film like there's more of like the younger version or something am i correct did you yeah. it's just more of all of it there's just more expansion yeah. on, the, <laughs> on everything yeah there, there's more of all of it i mean as someone who's never seen it before there were definitely scenes i could feel like yeah this this is like the extended versions for sure scene if you know what i mean mm -hmm. and it definitely yeah and it's it a very character driven movie so i don't even i like those extended scenes mm -hmm. but i think for the for the first viewing maybe theatrical cut might be better so this is <laughs> it um, is a long movie this is my second viewing but i don't know what i watched on my first and it was a while ago it was like 15 years ago mm -hmm. or something yeah the first time i watched the film i didn't connect to it super well Particular the the most that I remembered about it was how much I did not like Patrick Fugit's acting. Um, mm -hmm. I I not a big fan of his performance. Not because he's like terrible. He's not like the worst actor ever. Every other actor around him is just so more competent than he is, mm -hmm. and he's clearly the weakest link. But he's also the main character. And then during pivotal moments of the film, where you know he's supposed to be having this serious emoting where there's like conflict and he's arguing with uh, Kate Hudson or whatever. I don't buy it at all. And there's so many moments where I just don't buy I'm what so he's selling. Mm. And so when bitch. I watched it, when I rewatched it this time, I <laughs> like watched the extended cut. 
Yeah. I started watching it, and during these flashback sequences when there's the younger version of himself played by I forget who, somebody else, I was fucking loving oh, yeah. it. And I love Francis McDormand. I love the characters. And I like I thought that kid, that younger version, was actually really great. I thought he was better. Yeah, yeah he was so much better. <laughs> he was better. And I was like I he was anticipating good, yeah. this revival of an experience of like, oh, maybe I was just like 15 years old and I didn't like it or something. And although I give the movie a positive rating and I still think it's like a good movie, I didn't connect with the majority of it for a lot of the same reasons. I really don't like Patrick Fugit. I think his acting kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> and it's pretty evident in this movie. Otherwise, it's like a it's a good story. It's not poorly made, but that and then I can't the cinematography, I can't I can't even say anything about it because it's just so non existent. <laughs> what? I thought it looked great. I think I think it I don't looks have any complaints. good. I definitely see what you're saying about Patrick Fugit though. Yeah, he's definitely the weakest actor out of all of them. Yeah. I thought he was fine. Uh, yeah, he, he's just he's just the youngest. You know, he's very young in the movie. I think he's the youngest actor, except for the younger movie. version of himself. <laughs> yeah. That's even better. Yeah, <laughs> except the youngest version. Yeah, it was most highlighted to me during the uh, "I am dark and mysterious and pissed off" kind of breakdown he has <laughs> later on. Yeah, in the movie. So that, that that missed the you know, emotion for me. I, I never took him seriously, though. I never took him that seriously. Maybe that was good for his character. I, I thought he was fine for the most part. He's mm-hmm. surrounded by a lot of really good actors. I think that's what makes up for it. Yeah, his role in the story brings out interesting things because of yeah. him being in the press and it and what that. That means and he needs the, to be the, the main character because that that kind of like uh, outsider perspective. He goes on the most interesting journey, I guess, mm-hmm. out of anyone from idolizing these guys who were like in this band that he loves to kind of just you know, you know, really criticizing them publicly in a paper. You know, <laughs> that's what he does at the end mm-hmm. of the movie. Um, yeah, so it's, it is kind of a transformation. Uh, I think there's a lot of good character work in this movie. I think that's mainly what it's about, mm-hmm. and that's why that directors cut so much longer i've seen it with people who like uh I, i've shown them the director's cut for the first time and they think it's too long so maybe yeah, that theatrical I, I cut's better that. i forgot which one i saw the first time i like the director's cut just fine though i don't know if it would be the fact that it's the director's cut for me i don't know what i watched on the first time yeah. i just I, I i think that yeah. regardless of how quickly we got from point a to point b in the story there were just patrick fugit i just don't like him he's really annoying <laughs> yeah like no surprise he didn't have like a long and fruitful career after you know like he was in wrist cutters and then nothing important <laughs> you know hey he could have just went off acting because he didn't want to do it anymore i mean but i think this is a gr- it's a great credit i think almost famous it's a really good movie to be in yeah yeah it wasn't until philip seymour hoffman showed up for me though that the movie kind of got a bit more grunt to it Mm -hmm. because he represents kind of the other side of the scale where he's like remember these guys they're gonna wine and dine you and try and get you to behave a certain way to you know get to use you it's kind of like a theme of the movie people using each other and fucking each other over for this idea of fame and wanting the cover of a magazine and the the power dynamics that come out from that is the most interesting thing to me but it was the execution of it i guess i was finding frustrating in terms of what what the actual drama was being derived from, the the love triangles, the band falling out, the yeah, the kind of the the kind of corny stuff you expect. I was I was not expecting the <laughs> level of corniness that this movie kind of. It's a little corny. Down on. I think it, I think it works. I don't have a problem with a little. Yeah, bit I was of enjoying more when it was exploring just the 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 nature of the the art versus the the critic and. And, and this idea of the fan base and fandoms and what it really means to appreciate, you know, because yeah. it's, it's part of the movie where the, there's like the true fans kind of like gatekeeping each other about like, yes, yeah, it's, it's not just about the fame, it's about the music, everybody. And, this, you know, it's kind of this corny idea that goes through the movie where it's like, yeah, it's about being real in the music and kind of making fun. <laughs> yeah, be of the, real. Yeah, yeah it's like making fun real. of that whole kind of culture that comes with that. You know the sex mm-hmm. drugs and rock For and roll sure. and everything. For sure. And I guess that's another part of it too. I mean, the whole sixties, seventies. It's a seventies period piece. Obviously, the Rolling mm-hmm. Stone magazine, mm-hmm. Led Zeppelin, rock scene. Mm-hmm. If if yeah, you're really into that whole thing, it's based on all that thing, stuff. It's... Yeah, it's based yeah, on all yeah. that stuff. Like pretty accurate to those kind of bands. And you know, they would fight and the same kind of conflict these guys get yeah. into. Apparently, yeah. Cameron Crowe was like a young writer for. A rock magazine, yeah, or something semi-biographical. Biograph- uh, yeah, yeah, it is 
partly autobiographical a lot mm -hmm. of made-up stuff but you know yeah there's a lot of truth to it i mean those characters of like the band they're they're likable i think but they're they've got a lot of conflict too i think they've got some flaws mm -hmm. <laughs> that make them not so likable and that's what made them interesting characters i guess we'll get yeah. into it every character is interesting except the main character to me <laughs> well a huge part of the Pretty drama much, yeah. for the story too that i thought was actually interesting was francis mcdormand's character plays his mother mm -hmm. and she's kind of like losing her son her son's kind of growing up and wanting to hang out with these she's people quite overbearing who, yeah yeah but she's being overbearing because she's kind of I, I mean i would kind of be too she's scared if, for him, yeah. yeah she's scared for her son because these guys are kind of not so trustworthy i mean the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, like that kind of lifestyle, that's not really what she's about. <laughs> you know, she's a very 15, kind of strict yeah. mother, you know. And she's so overbearing that even Zoe Deschanel's character, who plays like the sister of Patrick Fugit, like ran off and became a stewardess. Um, but, you know, she, she cares for her son. And it's partly about like her watching her son grow up and kind of go into a dangerous world. And, <laughs> you know, I thought all that stuff was very resonant. And I liked, I liked that stuff with Patrick Fugit. I thought all that stuff was good. I thought the phone calls with her with his mom were pretty funny. Yeah. And there's yeah. usually something going wrong. Yeah. Like someone in the background yelling something. <laughs> or she would call and be like, oh, are you the pot girl? <laughs> like you're going to deliver drugs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. a lot of funny stuff like that. I think Frances McDormand is really great in this. I enjoyed those moments despite Patrick Fugit. Not because of him. <laughs> despite him. Yeah. <laughs> no, he really doesn't help any scene in the movie he really he's, <laughs> he's like not quite as bad as like lucas hedges i guess <laughs> yeah. i don't know yeah i don't think he's bad as lucas yeah no sorry I, I think he's much worse than lucas i meant to say oh yeah um, <laughs> yeah uh, i don't know what it was because like, i really noticed this too I, I felt like i was watching his direction or something it was like you never see the character was... you see an actor yeah I, I wasn't connecting with him either which yeah is a problem he is he is the the lens in which you see the yeah. story unfold um i was yeah. finding it funny though how they kind of subvert the manic pixie dream girl zoe deschanel with the sub him with the uh, kate hudson instead mm. who i was i was looking at our mdb and i was like oh my god i forgot she was in music yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, she's yeah, she music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's really funny. Yeah, wacky, but I, I enjoyed her character in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the memorable aspects. She's really Kate solid in this. Penny Lane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of attitude. Yeah, these rock and roll guys have like groupies with them, the band, and that's like what Kate Hudson is. Anna Paquin's one of them. Mm -hmm. Sapphire. I don't know who that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like, and that was a huge part of the movie too. Like these guys, they were bringing around these like younger girls with them, and they were kind of emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a lot. Of yeah, of the movie. I was. I'm like, oh yeah, it's cool to explore. Yeah, the main character brings that up, doesn't he? To um, yeah. I bet that's something he saw. Like, yeah, you're being used or whatever. Yeah, I mean, they were in these really abusive relationships. I mean, because they were idolizing these guys because they were rock and rollers or whatever. And, and you know, they were giving these girls tons of drugs. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And they are taking them across the country, like, away from their homes. Like, <laughs> It was crazy. Uh, but, you know, the, you also do like them, too, because they have this camaraderie and they're they're kind of funny. And the actors are quite likable. I think Billy Crudup's great. You know, Jason Lee is excellent in the movie. Yeah, Jason Lee stood out to me as being yeah, genuinely funny. I thought they were awesome. Like, you know. Yeah, apparently this is on a lot of uh, best movies of all time lists. Yeah, people love this shit. And I think it's that band camaraderie. I think it's mainly them. And that's a huge part of the movie is Billy Crudup and Jason Lee. And they're, they're a conflict. They fight a lot. They fight over bullshit like mm -hmm. bands do, I guess. But you know, you see their their kind of deterioration. But they're also friends, and like I love the scene where they're fighting over the t shirt. Mm -hmm. Like that's such bullshit. But, yeah, that's a good scene. <laughs> yeah, it, like it's awesome, and they're just like, you know, they're arguing over nonsense. <laughs> like your yeah, your looks are ruining you. <laughs> Whatever he says, mm -hmm. it's like it's like nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering because like it's not a movie that I feel like offended by watching it. And I think that overall it's like really solid and like really well made, but it's super solid. I don't know how much I'm retaining from it because right now, like I do have some notes, but like I don't really have like a full timeline of like the film in my head. 
in a way that like movies that I connect with, I do, you know, because a lot of it just kind of blends into itself for mm-hmm. me. You know, there, there's there's the elements like the mother being overprotective and Francis McDormand's great. But at a certain point, it does kind of get like pretty repetitive where it's like just kind of mm-hmm. it's the same scene happening again. And I don't know if that's just because it's the director's cut or how many of those same beats were in the theatrical version. But yeah, it in terms of like a uh, culmination of events, mm-hmm. I don't I don't really get the same energy that I would from other films that I love. It feels like kind of when things are getting yeah. towards the end, then there's like the ticking time bomb of like I need this interview so I can do this for the story, and then things start to like pick up again. But it seems like for a lot of the movie, it's kind of just. Like they're on tour. And if you love the environment and you love the characters and you love, you know, the setting, like the classic rock and like the energy to it, I can see why like so many people love this movie, obviously. But I, I guess mm-hmm. I'm just not as attached to that innately. I don't know. Oh, yeah, tour is a huge the tour is a huge part of the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like not the first hour, but like after the first hour basically. I don't know if it's different in the other cut in the theatrical one, but once he gets that tour, I think that's the rest of the movie, basically. Yeah, the tour is a huge part of it. So if yeah. you don't like that stuff, <laughs> yeah, they get some good humor out of the different interviews with the. Yeah, I thought the film the was really and... funny. I like when they go on the radio interview. Like that's really what drove it home for me too. Was the comedy? I thought it was a fucking yeah, that, very that's, funny yeah, film. Yeah, I agree. The humor is the thing I remember most because the yeah. the drama really didn't connect particularly with me and i thought everyone delivered in that way even like kate hudson and patrick fugit like they would make me laugh those the scenes where he was on the phone with his mom i thought i liked the um the airplane scene oh yeah the airplane scene we got to talk about that that's probably the best scene in the movie yeah that's the most iconic oh yeah absolutely uh his uh one of the band members what the hell is his name i'm trying to remember the name of the character at least the quiet one the one that keeps saying i'm just hudson Yeah, Hudson. (laughs) He yells, I'm gay! (laughs) Like, as the plane is crashing. It's like their last moment before they're about to fucking die, so they're all confessing shit to each other. That was fucking hysterical. And then, yeah, like, immediately after, I think the plane stabilizes, right? Yeah. We're gonna live! Back to normal. Yeah, that was awesome. Like, that's such a fucking great scene. And the fact that he doesn't say anything like the rest of the movie. Like, I think it was just mm-hmm. a joke. Like, I think it's just funny. I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of great fucking jokes in this. Um, and it's because I like those characters, I think. I think that I think the dynamic between them is usually really solid. Especially Jason Lee, Billy Crudup. Mm-hmm. I, I always loved the movie whenever they were on. Yeah, I like Jason Lee a lot. In Jason Lee in particular... Like when he has to, when he's pining for, he wants the cover of Rolling Stone, and then later on, when he actually is in the magazine, he's like complaining about how much of a dick he sounds. That was like a good payoff, like fun explanation yeah. of of the whole idea. Yeah, he's never happy. Like he's never happy with the t-shirts. He's like, oh, mm-hmm. you're the, I'm supposed to be the guy with mystique. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess, part of why it didn't connect too. It, is going back to that main character and where certain story beats sort of culminate, like when uh, that character nearly dies from quaalude overdosing and then he's like confesses his love to her and, and sexually and assaults her she's while she's arms. unconscious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking yeah. what? So a little weird. rapey. Like, a lot of sh- and also, yeah. like, let's let's yeah. gender swap for the some other scenes in the movie where like he loses <laughs> yeah, his virginity. Yeah, he's like fifteen years old to a bunch of like groupies or something. Just imagine like fucking yeah. three old dudes and like a fifteen year old girl around. Like that's a little weird. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's like I guess it's like supposed to just be like a part of like seventies rock culture sort of thing. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. Right, but. Uh, and also, I don't know. And even going back to the title, Almost Famous, this this kid kind of idolizing these guys, he wants to be a rock and roller and, and mm. be part of that crowd, but he's kind of a little too late. That that period of, of you know, the world yeah. is over. You know, those guys didn't really shine by the time he got to that age. And yeah, I think that's a huge part of the movie, these these young kids who never got to experience that. And, and I, I think there's a lot of good themes in the movie that I resonate with like that. Or um, just quotes... You know, like uh, the quote, um, the popular stuff is the best stuff. Like, I love that quote. I think mm-hmm. that's true in a lot of ways, where at least it's interesting to talk about. It gets people talking. Because he makes yeah, the argument, like, yeah, the Beatles, yeah. the Rolling Stones, like, those are the best bands of all time. 
and we talked about great movies here like you know the godfather and whatever like the godfather i think is the greatest movie or like taxi driver 2001 that's not a mm -hmm. uncontroversial answer that's like the popular stuff is the best stuff usually i i like that quote <laughs> i think just that alone makes the movie interesting i think there's lots it's, of stuff it's cool you get like the other that. side of the aisle as well the kind of cynical um side that you get from Seymour Hoffman, where he's saying it's like the industry yeah. cool and buying respectability and this kind of stuff. I that do like too. that you get the whole broad kind of. It is know, very broad. Every, every yeah. part of it has a has a <laughs> has someone that re like represents each section of it. Yeah, the idea of trying to be cool. Yeah, I like that because he, he yeah he is he is fifteen. He has no idea what his place is, and he is whipped out of yeah. his comfort zone and just has no idea what he's doing. And it's so fake the world he's in. And when he comes out, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, I, I, I knew I wasn't cool, but they were kind of making me think I was cool. That These concepts <laughs> I do enjoy, the themes I do enjoy, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just not for me. I, I don't know what else I can say. It's, it's one of those movies, <laughs> I, I've always avoided, I've got to admit, I've always avoided Cameron Crowe. Yeah. Because I've watched. Like, you didn't like, like Vanilla Sky? Yeah, I've watched a bit of Jerry Maguire, I watched a bit of Vanilla Sky, and I, yeah. I just knew, I just got the vibe of him, these he doesn't make movies for me. They're really just not what I'm looking for. <laughs> they're very film. sentimental. Yeah, they're very light. Yeah, maybe it's that. Uh, but I think those the fact are, that they're comedies to too makes them. up for it. Yeah, like they're dramas, but they're very funny and light. And, you know, those characters are very likable. Usually gets good actors that at least, you know, American audiences know and like. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Fallon is in the movie. I want to talk about him. Yeah, yeah. Because he kind of shows up out of nowhere, like toward the end. Who is he <laughs> it again? is kind of distracting, but Dennis Hope. He's like the manager he's like, that comes in. Oh. Yeah, for like the yeah. big record label, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah guys. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna give I was you expecting the... to see him. Actually. Yeah, but I thought he was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't distracting. His character was, was fine. <laughs> yeah. If you think Mick Jagger will be out there trying to be a rock star at the age of 50, you're yeah. sadly, sadly mistaken. <laughs> like, he's got good lines. Yeah, of stuff. Loads of comedic like uh, cameos. Like Rain Wilson's yeah. in there. Like oh, yeah. a really young Jay Baruchel. But how were were they mm -hmm. even really cameos in that year though? They were just yeah, actors in not, smaller but, roles. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. <laughs> they weren't recognizable enough in the year 2000 to be cameos. Maybe yeah. Jay. I don't they were know later. Hiccup. They later became famous, like um, like the one of the gay dads from Modern Family. So oh, it's yeah. a really small role. So yeah, it's just oh, loads yeah. of comedic actors just hidden in this good good casting there. agency mm -hmm. for sure yeah a lot of good actors in this they they elevate it a lot <laughs> except i'll give you uh mr whoever w miller william miller <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's his name i'm trying to think because there's nothing wrong with a sentimental light film, and that's a very good way to describe it. I agree with you completely. Yeah, I think this is a great example yeah. of one of those kinds of movies, like yeah. that's sentimental and light, but it's also very intelligent, and there's a lot going on. I'm I'm trying to think of like sentimental and light films that I really connect with, because I I walk away from a lot of them being like that was good, and then kind of just like yeah. not really pursuing them any yeah. further. Like Noah Baumbach films, I I enjoy a bit more. Yeah, like those are a little sure. sentimental and light. Wes Anderson, like wh where there's like a, a bit more personality and like a hint of edginess, a, a bit more edginess to them. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But this, this, I maybe it's just because this feels like a bit more of like a, like studio production sort of thing. Like it has that. Yeah, personality this feels more to broad it, than that. Right? Mm -hmm. Like I probably don't connect with sentimental light films that fall into that category as much. And I love the beginning, yeah, and so. I was really loving things near the end, aside from the running plane trope thing um oh yeah the <laughs> airport goodbye but yeah like what was happening near the end like and then scene. like particularly <laughs> near the beginning like i loved the whole younger version of the main character like i would totally watch like an entire movie of that and then it transforms into dweeb patrick fugit character just being annoying and other people around him seem to like him for some reason and mm -hmm. there's this gigantic blur in my memory of like what happened there. It's like, yeah, there. I remember the I remember the guy jumping into the pool and saying I'm on drugs. That was funny. I remember the the t-shirt argument, mm -hmm. but the movie was much longer than that. So, <laughs> what else was there? I don't remember. You know, it's just it it doesn't connect with me as much. Good movie, just not really for me. You mentioned the uh, running in the airport thing. Yeah. Um, which, which, yeah, that that was very corny to me. 
But there, earlier yeah. on in the movie, there is a really good someone running by the bus and then they crash into the wall. That was like, kind of funny. With perfect yeah. timing. That was like a, <laughs> the funniest shot to me, probably. Yeah. It was all in a one or two. That that yeah, could exactly. have looked really it's, bad. Yeah, that could have looked like scary movie five quality if they did a cut for the, Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but the fact no, it was that all they, about the timing of yeah. when she crashes into mm-hmm. that wall. That worked well, for sure. What'd you guys think of the music in this film? How much of it was... Uh... Because this was a lot of like a playlist music. This was like compilation music, right? Yeah. Like there wasn't really it. much that was yeah. it, it composed for this, was there? No, I don't think so. Yeah. But then there's scenes where the band is just playing on stage. Yeah. I don't know if that was composed for the movie, actually. Yeah, I have or no idea, actually. Just like, you um, know, they took someone else's songs, but, you know, I thought they were at least good at faking it. <laughs> yeah. It was so pretty convincing. Like, it looked like they had a real crowd there. It you won know, the... It wasn't uh, so- Grammy Fake for flipping. Best Compilation Soundtrack Album for a Motion Picture. Yeah, just because of the music they picked? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. It's a good era for that music, right? I think that's part of the appeal of the movie. Yeah. Like, it's got a good mm-hmm. soundtrack. Especially for, like, yeah. fans of classic rock. Captures that period really exactly, well yeah. with the music and the setting, like, the the props and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, costumes. Yeah, the film features over 50 songs. Yeah. It's almost half as much as Cruella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. When you, fi- I, I was finding when you have that that many songs playing, I, I don't really associate memories with many moments as much. There's a couple that Elton John one sticks out in my mind, mm-hmm. but you, you're yeah. hearing a new song so often, I feel like it, it's less impactful. I, I'm not unfamiliar with it, but I haven't listened to a lot of these artists as much, mm-hmm. so it doesn't like. I don't listen to the soundtrack a lot. That Goodfellas soundtrack I listen to. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I just know there's a certain type of person yeah. this film would really connect with. Yeah, it's, definitely. It's not me. I might not be that 100% because I'm not connected to that era of music as much. But mm-hmm. it's got a lot of really solid characters. It makes me want to get into that era more. I mean, there's there's some good music. Yeah, There's absolutely. some really great classic rock. And this is about the end of that era. It's very sad. It's about a lot. About a, yeah. the end of his childhood or whatever, <laughs> have like a journey of self discovery. Yeah, coming of age. A journey so. of for his mother of letting go of her kids, or at least like not being as self controlling. Mm-hmm. Like that love story. This idea with Kate of what Hudson, is rock and roll? Billy Crudup. That's a question. Yeah, what is rock ask and a lot in the movie. Sure. Yeah, the uh, struggling with fame and money and success and drugs, and women. <laughs> it's like a million things going on. It's like wow, it's such an epic film. Corporate and it's all tied together with like really funny scenes. Journalism, really good comedy. Well, I guess the journalism angles there because well, it's accurate to his real life. It makes the dynamic more complicated. Yeah, he wants to. He wants to learn about them. He needs to learn more information about these people for practical reason. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they keep calling each other the enemy, don't they? They keep addressing. Oh, I'm, I'm getting too like attached. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. It's it's a very it's um brilliant. very critically acclaimed movie. It's on a, bu- a bunch of uh, best movies of all time lists. So Alex and I are in the minority yeah. here for sure. Yeah, I, I looked up the meta score and saw it got a ninety there, very yeah. high. Ebert um, glad uh-huh. enjoy called it. it the the best film of the year and the ninth best film of the two thousands as a decade. I guess. Whoa. Yeah. So a lot of people really That's love nuts. it. I'd be curious to read. Leave in the comments. I, yeah. If you, if you do love <laughs> it, I want, I want to see, you know. All right. Well, would you give this film out of 10 if we don't have anything Ooh. else to say about it? Well, or we can continue. Uh, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. You uh, don't even well, know. It won at the Academy Awards. You said it got a claim. I think it won best, yeah, won best original screenplay, screenplay right? from Cameron hmm. Crowe. And it was nominated for best actress for Frances McDormand. Kate Hudson was nominated. She has enough. Editing. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think it's trying to be like, I guess it is trying to be deep, but I like the tone of it. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like it's trying to be anything it isn't. <laughs> yeah. I think it nails exactly Don't let the tone. us influence your rating. Mm-hmm. If you want to give it a 10 out of 10. That's no, totally no. Fun. Some people love this movie. think it's mm-hmm. like one of the greatest movies of all time. So, yeah. I don't know if Billy Crudup is enough. Oh, not Billy Crudup. Uh, Patrick Fuckett. Yeah, Patrick Fuckett. <laughs> I don't know if Patrick Fuckett's performance is is as bad to like lower the rating for me. That's the thing. I think I, I mean, got it at five out of five. 
I think it's perfect. I think yeah. I agree with everyone else. <laughs> it, it deserves that list. Like it deserves yeah. that spot on the list of best movies. Yeah. I, just, I don't know. Do you think he's that bad? I I, well, here's the bad. thing is that I don't, I don't see a movie <laughs> that I'm like super into. And then I look at Patrick Fugit's performance and then I think I have to lower the rating. It's that the rating doesn't get high in the first place <laughs> yeah, he didn't because really his take performance me prevents all. me from you know? connecting to parts in the film that I would otherwise. Yeah. And e even with that, you know, it's not like the only thing that I'm not connecting to, but I think it is a gigantic part of it and sometimes there yeah. is just like one element that really prevents you from getting sucked into it because films are a collection of different elements and if there's one thing you know if there's one thing that's preventing you from feeling the illusion of the story or feeling like the characters being sincere then that can be like pretty detrimental and i think that's what happened to me for the most part but yeah i, I would still say it's a good movie it's well made there's a lot to appreciate about it um, but, you know, factoring in the technical elements as well as my own personal feelings about the film and how much I connected to it, I'm uh, giving this one a 6 out of 10. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, Patrick, I'm actually pretty fuck much... It. <laughs> exactly Sorry, he was 18 at the time. Yeah. From my first viewing, um, I, I, yeah, I, I was really trying to connect, but I, yeah, it was that main character. It was... I, I did admittedly watch the one that was too long, but I could see within that it's it's just not the movie for me. It's not the it's not the setting for me. It's not. It has the themes for me, but the way it's kind of it seems to prioritize the more sentimental, emotional side of it. And I don't know that it just didn't work for me on that level. Um, I, yeah, I like the seventies aesthetic. I do agree. It's it's a very well made movie. I had no problems with the the technical side of it in that regard. But yeah, as far as my enjoyment goes, I I got to admit it was kind of bored when um. In, in certain segments of the movie where I wasn't getting my Jason Lees, my Seymour Hoffman's or Penny Lane type characters. But yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It, it does have that. It does have your Frances McDormand's and Anna Paquin's. Like it has a re really good cast, a really good set of ideas and a great backbone of a story. But yeah, that execution didn't, didn't connect with me. Three star. Yeah. Well, five out of five, motherfucker. <laughs> own it. I think it's what do you nice. think in the comments section? Yeah, just own it. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of people think that, but yeah, it's all right. Uh, that's almost famous. Ladies if you disagree, then whatever. That was almost famous. Directed by the best stuff is the popular Cameron stuff. Crow. <laughs> is the best stuff the popular stuff? You decide. <laughs> Do you think so? Me? Well, I mean, I'm the. Yeah, I'm not I'm exactly. I, I Avengers don't. Endgame. No. Transformers. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would not say that I connect, resonate with the that quote as much as you. I think yeah. all of most of my favorite movies and most of my favorite bands that I listen to are not typically the most popular things of all time. There's some cases where it overlaps. You know, I love early I Eminem. That, that one good. like rap album of the year, like three times in a row for his career or whatever. Yeah. You know, Birdman. I try won not the to be like, oh, Oscar. if it's popular. Fucking... Yeah, exactly. I try not to yeah. be like, oh, it's if it's popular, then to... it sucks. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good reason on its own. Yeah, sometimes it's something popular. And then there's sometimes it's, you know, shit. Like, it's just garbage. But mm -hmm. you, get, you get Jurassic World. Or whatever oh, good. but i guess that's you know but sometimes you can get like an art film that's you know really bad <laughs> like something mm. that's not popular and watch it and yeah like Laura's i feel like you have that same experience like sometimes. you could say the same thing like if it's obscure it, that probably means it's fucking boring or it has a bunch of weird shit that i'm not gonna like <laughs> like and that's like the other side of the coin I'm like, oh, well that's okay that's that's why if i'm like watching it, a film the most important factor to consider whether or not i'm i think i'm gonna like it would just be the director doesn't matter if the director makes popular sure. movies yeah. or movies that nobody's ever heard of if i like the other movies from the director that's going to be the best gauge as to whether or not i'm going to enjoy mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. yeah i'm with you before we get into question time i would like to issue maybe a correction i guess there was a comment that disputed the uh claim that i made that uh Darren Aronofsky bought the rights to Perfect Blue before making a Requiem for a Dream. Apparently, oh, yeah. that originates from an interview that he had with like a Japanese magazine or something. And within the interview, he was at the point in time in the 
process of trying to get the American distribution rights. Uh, and so the magazine reported it that way. But after the magazine was published, it turns out that he didn't, wasn't able to, but he still made the attempt. Does that mm -hmm. mean that he ripped off Perfect Blue? I don't really, you know, you could say he ripped off oh, a shot, I guess. But is that yeah, really going to... Okay. It's not like why people love Requiem for a Dream, so... Sure. Anyway, but yeah, that's my correction. And I'm saying apparently because like a lot of these sources are in Japanese and I like I'm not going to I'm not doing the Kimba thing again. OK, you you people look <laughs> into it. OK, I'm just here to say that it's it's disputed and <laughs> I, so you much can stuff figure is that lost shit in translation. Out. Yeah. From specifically over there, we had the same problem when we were talking about Grave of the Fireflies. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the statement from the director and where he says course, it's an anti confusing. it's not an anti war movie or something. Yeah, <laughs> but you can like read deeper, and it's like obviously more in depth, and it's been translated and misquoted, and you got to like go to the source yeah. to find out the truth. Sort Fucking of thing. get it together, Japan! Just speak English already. Satire. Yeah, man, that wasn't three a real alphabet. <laughs> it's <just> ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> that wasn't a real st statement. <laughs> Don't ban me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. Yeah, <laughs> for <laughs> should should have done it in the Texan accent. That's a cure all if you want to make a slightly racist joke. Japan's got to get their sting together and speak American. There we go. <laughs> Saved. Mm. All right. Um, <laughs> question time. <laughs> Let's do some questions then from the Sardonicast community. If you want to leave your own questions, head over to the Sardonicast subreddit where there will be a suggestion thread where you can ask whatever you like. Whiskey food has a little one to get us going, which we kind of referenced earlier. Can we hear Ralph say Luca Guadagnino's name again? <laughs> Oh my god, why? <laughs> Wait, how did you say it? Just once. At it. Luca Guadagnino. Hold on, Rocky's barking. Let me shut him up. <laughs> no, you can't escape this, you gotta say. <laughs> Look it up on IMDb. Luca Guadagnino. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Look, it's Directed by wrong. Pixar. <laughs> Laugh at 0601 has a real question then. I've got a question for Adam, though I'd love to hear any insight from Alex and Ralph. What do you think is the best way to write an LGBTQ plus character? Is it just as simple as writing the character as a person who just so happens to be LGBTQ plus? Or do you think that, that it's more complicated than that? What are some of your favorite and least favorite LGBTQ plus characters? Well, okay, so there's this, it, it's almost like a psychological phenomenon that basically because LGBTQ+, plus whatever you want to call it, a anybody with like a an atypical identity or sexuality is going to be looked at as not the norm. And just by default of that not being the norm, then no matter how you include it, it's going to seem like it's kind of a political statement. When in reality, right. like it can easily just be like, oh, it just is, right? If you include a straight person in a piece of media, when James Bond fucks a girl, that's not a statement. That's just like, oh, this is the default, right? But if, they, if James Bond were gay and he was just fucking a dude in the middle of the movie, even if it was handled the exact <laughs> same way, even if it was handled the exact identical way to any other James Bond film, it would all of a sudden be a political statement, right? It would all of a sudden be like, ooh, mm -hmm. this is like a forced thing that you're trying to yeah. put into the movie. And maybe Maybe, maybe it is depending on the intentions of the people putting it into it when I see you know like Pixar or, or Disney marketing these things where it's like get your first gay character is like you don't actually give a shit you're just being a stupid corporation yep. trying to get like some pub publicity over not even doing like the bare minimum so in terms of writing a, a gay character I think it would be a mistake to say that there is one specific way that it has to be because you know, sometimes there's pieces of media where the point is that they're gay. Sometimes there's pieces of media where that doesn't have to be the point. It depends on what you want to create. If it's something that the writers obviously have some kind of personal connection to and they're being genuine about it, then that's great. That's ideal. Put whatever you want in your movie, you know, like you can have... I always thought it would be cool to like just cast a a movie, like write a script, and then if... If there's like a trans person that shows up to the uh, casting process and they're the best person for the role, just put them in and don't change anything about the script. Maybe that could work. Maybe yeah. it has to be a part of their identity. There's arguments from all sides. Like you, you can put like a minority character in a film and then there might be people complaining like that they didn't explore enough about them, you know? So 
I don't know. It seems like unwinnable in a yeah. sense. You can't please everybody, but I don't know. Just try try to make it seem like you're not doing it for cynical reasons is I guess what I would say. Yeah. What stands out in your mind then as good or particularly good or particularly bad examples? Yeah, I'm trying to think this. some good examples. And there was a trailer examples, for a new course. Netflix show called Q Force. Uh, the animators are saying the trailer is out of context and the show is actually much better, but who the fuck knows? The trailer looks like absolute dog shit. And the whole oh, idea that. behind yeah. that is like, we're spies, but we're gay. And so every line in the trailer is like, it made my butthole go boop. And it's like, nobody talks like uh. that. <laughs> like no, Nobody says that. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. So that's a little annoying and is obviously trying to pander and capitalize off, off of it in a cynical way. Sure. We'll see how the show is. I don't expect it to be great. I think I think a good example, one of my favorite examples, Alex Garland's Annihilation. It's about mm -hmm. four women, and one of them's a lesbian, and it's oh, just yeah, like yeah. you know, they're just scientists kind of on a mission doing something. Like, oh yeah, yeah, they're women, but yeah, it's not they really explored it a little. Like that's not really important. Like, it just depends. Obviously, everything you put in a movie has to mean something. So having it all be women, they're, one of them's a lesbian, <laughs> it has some significance, just in the same way John Carpenter's the thing, they're all men. It just depends on the story you want to tell. Is it believable? It's more believable for Laurie Strode to be in Halloween in Haddonfield, so have it be a woman. <laughs> like, It just depends on the kind of movie and the, the story. I don't know. I, f I feel like if I wrote a character like that, they would just kind of serve a purpose in the story, aside from being identified as that. <laughs> like an annihilation. I think that's the way to go. If you don't identify as like an LGBTQ person, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what pops into my head more is um is TV almost. I, I think sure. of recently Euphoria. Yeah. There's the trans yeah, character. which I haven't seen. Just a really genuine like character. And uh, another HBO show, Six Feet Under, Michael C. Hall's character is gay in it. And yeah, yeah that's right. That being, that's a good example. Being effective and and an interesting one actually is um, a, a sitcom example. Um, Brooklyn Nine Nine has like a gay sergeant character. I don't even really like the sitcom that much, but it is a big part of that character that he is gay. But the approach is that he is just a character who is gay, and not that his character is that he's gay. If you know what I mean, because that can be a, a thing in in certain sitcoms where it's like, like in Big Mouth, that the gay character is a certain way a certain stereotype if you were can just get boring after a while mm -hmm. nice to see a fresh spin in uh brooklyn 99 with that kind of thing yeah almost famous has a great example <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> the gay character in that that was just a joke though that was yeah. just supposed to be funny uh I, I like that though there's a movie called weekend from andrew haig h-a-i-g-h yeah i've heard of weekend correctly. um yeah. well there's like two movies called weekend but the one I'm thinking of is like from 2011 from that that director. So don't confuse that with the, uh, what is it, Jean-Luc Godard weekend? I don't remember who directed sure. the other one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like a really genuine relationship movie. And it's kind of like, it's almost like uh, before trilogy or something, you know, where it's like a lot of conversation mm -hmm. and these two people that, you know, are in a relationship and exploring love and, you know, it it feels like a nice, genuine gay relationship movie and same thing with uh call me by your name like that was another standout one yeah, obviously yeah. really great cinematography too but like yeah it's like a genuine nice sort of thing that doesn't try to go out of its way to be like super political in how it does it you know in call yeah, me by your name true. there's never any scene where they have to battle with like people not accepting them being in the closet sort of thing yeah. they're just free to it's exist the as these characters in the same way that if yeah. you wrote right. a story about a straight couple, they would. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. It explores that character, yeah. That's it's interesting, yeah. Even though Army Hammer's like a creep. Oopsie. <laughs> you you can't about Army Hammer. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I think he's worse. I think he's like abusive or whatever. whatever. Uh, but, you know, uh, whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Is Luca also, is Luca Guadagnino, Guadagnino, is he a... LGBTQ person? Is he gay? Oh, I don't know. 
Does anyone know? But I think I yeah, think exactly. in general, it's not like I really care. Europeans no, have a lot less of an apprehension towards exploring sexuality definitely, than Americans. Definitely, yeah, so true. True, uh-huh. true. that could probably for sure. Be a huge, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot less sexual repression in Europe. And you know, even call me by your name, like it's about that character, and you know, it's not just like he's gay haphazardly. Like I think it explores that a lot in an interesting mm-hmm. way. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a fan of it just being thrown in, like Finding Dory. There's like two lesbians in the background. Oh, you know, uh, like that's oh, yeah, because that's thing. clearly yeah. there <laughs> for the screenshot that, yeah. and clearly so insignificant that it can be edited out for Russia and, and you know, China. Who's deciding that? Who's deciding that? Like you don't even know, really, right? Is that a decision they made the by the director? Thing the too. animators snuck yeah. it in, like fuck you, know, you. Yeah. Like, what does it mean? Like, what does it mean? Nothing. Yeah, it's not part of the story or anything. And call me by your name is gay because that's the point of the movie. <laughs> that's the story. Yeah, that is that's, it. that's the story, and it's emotional and powerful. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't just throw it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or uh, annihilation. She just happens to be, and she's also like a scientist, or I think she's a paramedic. In annihilation, mm-hmm. that's fine. I think those are two good examples. I would try to ape those. Yeah. Okay. The uh, shot has one for us. What is the strangest thing that you've received genuine backlash for? Um, I was trying to wrap my brain. Oh, so many. <laughs> a strange one I remember annoying people with was uh, I, I spoiled the end of Mice and Men, like in a video, like randomly. Mm. And like people, people got upset that I spoiled the ending of a Mice and Men. It's like a book from 1937. <laughs> mice and That's men. It. Yeah, you read that in like English class. Because like, then I was reading yeah, the comments cares? like, what? Thanks for spoiling of mice of men, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> when, when is the cut? I got really got to do spoiler warnings or of mice, mice and men? men. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Anything strange that stands out in your minds? I don't know. Fucking the Pokemon movie, the new one. What was that <laughs> called? The, what was the, p- uh, Detective, the Detective Pikachu? Pikachu? Yeah. People are so mad that I didn't give that like a better rating. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, that really important like, movie what? everyone remembers. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. oh, God, like, nobody gives a shit about that now. Same thing with like Suicide Squad. I got a lot of heat when that came out. Now, like, now where where did the fans go? It's just Angry Joe. Like, I don't know who else was a fan. Clearly more people than Angry <laughs> Joe were a fan of that movie. Where did the rest of them go? Right? So, I don't know. Yeah, Amazing Spider-Man Two, not another a good one, movie. Suicide but... Squad. That that is the worst DC movie. I, I think that is. Yeah, Suicide I think Squad. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think that is. It's, uh, yeah, I finally saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Batman vs Superman. It's up there. Oh, what was the question? Strangest thing you've received genuine backlash for? Just yeah, some random like thing Batman vs Superman, expecting. like all the DC. Yeah, Batman vs Superman. Just anything with a mindless fan base, basically. Suicide, yeah. Anything with a mindless fan base, yeah. Well, Batman vs. Superman was a big one. Because that movie sucks. Like, (laughs) who likes that? I I saw that in theater. It was so dull. No one said anything. The whole whole movie in the the audience. I guess Mm. that's what you're supposed to do. Um, (laughs) The audience usually claps and laughs, at least, you know, with a Marvel film. Mike Soklaus said it was like attending a funeral. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It kind of was. You know what though? I don't. If people are just gonna backlash over like words, I don't think that that's a big deal. You know, there's other YouTubers that are doing like cryptocurrency scams and shit. Yeah. What what oh, our yeah, biggest controversies are? We've words. just said things that people don't like sometimes. So I think that's pretty cool. People steal money. People take advantage yeah. of of other people. In, like yeah. messages and you know. I think we're doing abuse. pretty good. <laughs> no, we don't do that. Yeah, if you if yeah, if that's the thing you're most annoyed at me is because I like don't like the Sonic movie. Don't like yeah, Pokemon. That's pretty good going yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I haven't even seen the Sonic movie. Help, Maybe I should help. There were words that someone said that I didn't like. You don't like Almost Famous? <laughs> we're gonna get backlash for that. <laughs> People yeah. love that movie. You get backlash for ratings, like minor rating stuff like that. Um, but that's mostly a joke, right? Like, people don't actually get mad at me for a rating. <laughs> no, you'd be surprised. Is that okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> it must be a joke. You, you hope so. Some people are very attached to the their properties. I guess so. 
I saw who Karsten Ryquist is that his name? Ryquist. Karsten or whatever. Nesquik. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. He uh, rated Goodfellas nine out of ten. I'm like, okay, you need to up that. Oh. <laughs> Damn, <throw laughs> to shade. ten out of ten. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> get on it but like that didn't make me upset like that's just a that's like that's just a joke like that's funny i think <laughs> yeah i don't think people actually get offended over ratings well, yeah the problem is you're 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 coming from a rational position as the thing you're not like 12 years old and love detective pikachu and then see <laughs> yeah. online a, a video like, oh i'm gonna ruin his good. life <laughs> <laughs> like people like they get so upset over opinions that they like try to dox you or like ruin your life or something like it's that's ridiculous I feel like it was mostly adults that watched Detective Pikachu. In the theater, yeah. it was mostly adults. Like, that's capitalizing off of, like, childhood nostalgia for, like, millennials, right? Really? That's weird. This whole era. Like, you, The Lion King? This Aladdin? Yeah, it's capitalizing is, yeah. off of nostalgia for people who are clearly like not children because movies. they have it's nothing weird. to be nostalgic that, that over. They're movies for kids. <laughs> hey, maybe it's because, like, kids don't want to go see movies anymore. It's just, like, all their parents go. Yeah, they got Fortnite. They don't care about the movies. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the parents exactly. are They'd ultimately play the Call ones Duty who Warzone. decide where As the money is spent, right? So You don't have to get pandered to by a bunch of studios. Let's do this one from Picture I'm a Dreamer. Who would you pinpoint as the prime example of a filmmaker with no style? Do you think it benefits their <laughs> films to not be defined by a specific style, or does it just make them uncheeky and unrecognizable? Well, no style. I don't know. That could be a good thing, too. I've got an example, but it's not a good example. Brett Ratner is, is <laughs> yeah. a director who has no style to yeah. it. Yeah. We're going by the bad definition. I think the Steven Seagal films, like those directors... <laughs> You know, uh, Brian A. Miller for, like, Bruce Willis's films. Keone yep. Waxman for Steven Seagal. Yeah, those guys, they don't care. <laughs> like, the Death Race movies, you know, the straight-to-DVD ones. Mm -hmm. Those have no style. Fucking Brian Singer. You know? You could just... Mm. You, you, Brian you, Singer? I mean, they, yeah, they literally had another director do the rest of the movie, and you can't tell which parts... <laughs> the Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody? Know, like, that one? Where yeah. Like I mean, all of his movies, it's like it's not the directing that's well, really. Well, yeah, that that uh, Bohemian Rhapsody movie's terrible. Like, yeah, I couldn't mm -hmm. believe how fucking bad that you was. Just swap him out but, for like, somebody the, you else. Know, you don't need that's him really either. a fall from grace because, like, you know, Usual Suspects, X Men, like those were he good did some movies good when they came stuff, out. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Like he used to be considered like a respected director, but yeah, after those allegations or whatever, mm -hmm. and fucking yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, like that movie sucks. That movie's a fucking mess, and it it doesn't even capture what that guy's life is like, really. Yeah. No, John Watts, the new Spider-Man's uh -huh. movies, which is weird no, because when he was making better. like when he was making <laughs> like on. the uh, <laughs> older films in his career, he made Clown, that had like personality to it. Maybe not, I guess, necessarily from the directing, but it was it's like a memorable movie. But then as soon yeah. as he starts Brent doing Spider-Man shit, he's like, I don't know, I guess just the most boring cinematography yeah i agree with that one it stands out so much for a character like spider-man he's such like mm. a kinetic creative character i think brett ratner is like much worse than someone like that yeah and yeah all yeah. the accusations against him too like yeah brett ratner's piece of shit oh what about the guy who does like the ant-man movies <laughs> peyton reed yeah. yeah 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 peyton reed Pain yeah, sucks. Like yeah, you directed like Yes Man, <laughs> terrible Ant Man. Oh, what do you know? Yes Man. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's probably quite a good example of this. <laughs> Everyone makes that joke. Yeah. No style. I think Keone Waxman. <laughs> the Russo brothers. Those Steven Seagal movies. Those are the worst. I don't know. There's a crap ton of directors that have like no style. They they're just there for like the paycheck sort of thing. They're there yeah, to make it job, work doing in the job. bare minimum way, but they're not there to add mm -hmm. their own voice, really. Mm -hmm. It's like an independent contractor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I guess that's not what people want, you know? They just want bland shit. Well, I don't know. They want bland it, shit it's... made by uh, weirdos. I, I, I don't think that if these films had more style, they would be less successful, though. I think Yeah. they just don't. Yeah get as much trust from they just Disney. don't care they're just like whatever it's too risky and too hard to make something yeah. weird and different 
Yeah. And I guess, it I is. don't know, uh, if you're making a gigantic franchise of all these different directors, then you might want them to be bland, as bland as possible just so they feel more cohesive, you know? Unlike the yeah, DC universe like the where it's like, well. oh, this one's in 4 by 3 now. Oh, cool. This is, this is the same franchise? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. I think Brett Ratner takes the cake, though. Yeah. <laughs> From, as far as, like, worst. Yeah, I think Brett Ratner's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, he's much worse than Brian Singer right? in terms of directing. I mean, they're both awful. I just, I just mean just their movies. Like, his movies, <laughs> fucking Rush Hour, like the Rush Hour movies. <laughs> X-Men 3, Tower Heist. Like, those are fucking... He did, like he did movie 43. Movie he did a Oof. segment movie 43. Oh, my God. Hercules... Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fucking that trash. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not as bad as the other Hercules with um <laughs> Kellen Lutz. Oh. Yeah, there's two. There's Dwayne Johnson, and then there's the guy from Twilight. I might be saying his name wrong, but... No I think you said it him. correctly. Oh, yeah. The only reason I know of that name is from the commentary things. Oh, yeah, yeah I'd forgotten about that. It's Legend of Hercules, same year, mm. directed by Rennie Harlan. Yeah, that's right. He did Die Hard 2. Yeah. Oh, the so, worst yeah. of the three originals. <laughs> yeah, it's just a yeah. copy of the first one. <laughs> I mean, the third one was a copy of the first one. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Butter 467 is one. Dune was recently delayed to October 22nd, which means Dune, Last Night in Soho, The French Dispatch, I should think The Last Night, has yeah, just been delayed, since. But, and Jackass 4 are all coming out on the same day. My question is, has there ever been an instance where a release date of a movie ruined its box office potential? That happens all the time, I think. I mean, <laughs> there's been instances of them saving themselves by releasing when no one else, like the Alvin and Chipmunk movies or something, you know, I'll be like, Nothing else is out. You have to see Alvin and Chipmunks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Sometimes there's never a right time, maybe. I don't Scott know, because... a huge bomb. They're trying to they cram in a lot. Like, the end of August. I don't know why Jackass 4 is being released at that point in time. The rest of them, it's because they're awards movies, and they want to be at the yeah. end of the year. Jackass 4, I think they're just like, well, it's finished. I guess we release it now. Mm. <laughs> I feel like they could have made more money off Spiral if uh, yeah. they just released it digitally. Yeah. Instead of waiting all that time. Release it during the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. People would have watched it. Was it. Quiet. I feel like an October release would have been better. Like for this year. Yeah. Yeah. But just like in the it, middle of the we're summer. We're dropping it like middle of the scary. year. Yeah. Every other yeah, stuff like almost dropped in October. When you release your movie, it's very important. It was just, yeah, yeah it's for the super biggest important movies, for it to be you want to release May? it when people go. Yeah. Like uh, July is a good time. You know, a lot of people go to the movies during the summer. M. Night. Or at the end of the year. Christmas, like around then, mm -hmm. so that's like a good time. Uh, and, and like those are the movies they have, they have the most faith in. But sometimes they release good movies like in August. <laughs> like I don't know what they think is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works out. Like Guardi Guardians of the Galaxy, I think was Audi uh, August, yeah, and that but it was an out August release well. um, that killed that was the like, Iron Giant. Yeah. It was like up against yeah, Six Sense. That Scott um, Pilgrim, I think of. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Rambo. Was Scott Pilgrim a bad timing thing, though, or uh, just it wasn't connecting with audiences thing? It was that, You too. never know. It wasn't connecting. It's a mix of things. Yeah, multiple factors. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I mean, I'm, I'm, I applied for uh, TIFF again this year, so I think, three, I think the three of those, like Dune and French Dispatch and Last Night in Soho, might be at TIFF. So I might be I might be able to see them early. Hopefully, we don't really know yet because even if they are on the list of movies, there might be some like extra restrictions. Like last year, they didn't do the father for digital. I think that was like in person only. Mm -hmm. So that might be the situation again with a few of these. But all right, we'll see. It would be nice to catch them early. Yeah. Whatever. Who knows? Who knows what they'll do? Mm -hmm. Individual log has one for us. Question for Adam and Ralph. What is the equivalent of Swindon of your countries? So uh, the, there's mm. a, a town in the UK called Swindon, which is kind of like what happens when you have loads of small towns over time just kind of join into this gelatinous blob of a town that's like the hellhole 
with like <laughs> it's just like the it's like the pimple of the country basically like no one wants to go there no one wants to live there no one wants to be there but you find yourself having to go there sometimes <laughs> that's what's, funny it's kind of the pimple of your country <laughs> everyone from the uk knows what i'm talking about <laughs> <You> know, <Swindon. laughs> there's got to be a, a canadian and usa equivalent much bigger obviously places but. yeah i mean there's more landmass, so we would never have to say like you have to go there sometimes it's like fuck like <laughs> it's like the uk <laughs> can fit in like one canadian province like the entirety yeah, true. so like fucking all of europe it's like you you guys travel to a different country like we traveled to, like different cities <laughs> yeah yeah, so. yeah yeah that's hard one though America's big, you know. <laughs> there's not like one spot. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a few, a, there's a few What's pimples. Like the trashiest place. <laughs> like what what pops into your head first when you think of the place I least want to go in Canada or the USA? Fucking, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to go anywhere in Canada. S Saskatchewan, <laughs> fucking, like Saskatoon, like. Uh... What's wrong with them? What's the, what's your problem with them? It's just like the <sighs> middle of the country. And there's like nothing there, and except like a bunch of like extreme religious fanatics and cheap right. rent because nobody wants to live there, so the rent's cheap. Mm -hmm. So because there's you're just lowering your quality of life just to exist for less money, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get a job as like a trucker or like an oil worker or something. I guess oil workers is more Alberta, but yeah, I mean like each province, provincially, there's like a little shithole in each of them. I guess you know. I don't know. Mm. Like, there's a yeah. lot of like not quite the city, but like part of the greater city thing. So, like for Vancouver, it's Surrey. Like people are like, ah, fuck Surrey. Oh, we got Surrey here as well. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's similar, but yeah, more more crime, more COVID cases, more annoyance, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's right. lots of COVID in Swindon, yeah. Yeah, cheaper rent, <laughs> but, but you lose the quality of life. It's enticing. If you never want to leave your home ever, then get the cheaper rent. Yeah. You go, it's got to yeah. be somewhere looking, in the U.S. Right. I'm looking through a list of, like, worst cities in the U.S. and <laughs> Like, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just thinking to myself. I wouldn't, California's pretty bad. Like, there's a lot of bad spots in California. <laughs> and Florida and Michigan. Anywhere in the Bible Belt, yeah, just <laughs> like small anywhere in South South, America, like Louisiana, Alabama, like Hawaii, like any Hawaii, not like major city in America. Somewhere. I really wouldn't want to live in Hawaii, like around volcanoes. Like, like there's just a lot of America that's just like, why would you want to? Like, California is hot, overpopulated. Michigan is like a dump. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not trying to be me, like Illinois, <laughs> Louisiana, yeah. just the entirety of Illinois. <laughs> yeah, it, like when you look at a like a list of worst cities, usually like Michigan, Michigan, Louisiana, <laughs> yeah, California, <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> it's usually those, it's, like, and a lot of Hawaii too. Mm -hmm. You know, surprisingly, a lot of Florida. I wonder, maybe there's a lot yeah. of crime in Florida. There, there's a lot of bad shit in florida there's a lot of uh yeah religious fundamentalism and uh counter where the, like, bar salts videos come from as well right yeah Flo <clears throat> the, the, like florida has its own meme of like florida man right because there's that's right yeah yeah because there's so much crazy shit happening in florida it's like wow <laughs> there's a really uneducated population that's looking to attack people at a higher rate than the rest of the country <laughs> yeah, yeah really uh the, like highest teen pregnancy rate in the United States, they practice right. abstinence only. Ab of New York <laughs> education, <laughs> obviously that works. Uh huh. Hilarious. Right. New York's pretty good though. There's not many bad spots in New York. Like I, I, I wouldn't say. Maybe New Jersey. But mm. I'd like to visit New York. Yeah, it, it, it is toward the south. Yeah, it, show New me York's the best pizza nice. pies. Yeah. <laughs> New York's yeah, they got good pizza and they got good bagels. And and that kind of stuff. Good delis, good like diners. Yeah, go go to a diner. Are you? Uh, I know you mentioned uh, Illinois bad. Are you really passionate about the uh, <laughs> Chicago pizza versus New York pizza debate? Are you passionate about that? Mm. Passionate. Well, I just think New York pizza is better, but Chicago pizza is different. 
it's, it's like a, yeah they're two right? different things it's i find the argument yeah to be silly. it's very different yeah yeah it's not just like bad pizza like domino's is bad pizza <laughs> yeah it's like a it's just different mm -hmm. style i just don't like that kind of pizza at all mm -hmm. i would prefer new york and you know if you go to italy the pizza is different that's probably the best <laughs> but like new york and italian yeah, yeah. pizza is the best yeah. like chicago i'm not i'm not about yeah. that whenever it's, i'm in chicago it, i always it, get some like giordano's uno, or whatever that's what uno specializes in is like deep dish chicago style no, it's lumilnati's that's what that i get good. yeah mm, okay it's decadent flaky very nice domino's is okay if it's like the middle of the night you had something to drink yeah <laughs> you guys make me hungry yeah, I'm gonna get some dominoes <laughs> after this. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun. I'm gonna eat a salad. Ah, healthy. Yeah, it's not very dominoesy. No, it's not. Get a Caesar salad. No. Get a domino salad. No. Pizza you salad. know what's really funny? You look at like the, the fucking nutritional information <laughs> on some of these fast food places that do salads. It's like holy shit, McDonald's is selling salads that are like more calories than a Big Mac. Like holy shit, how do you make a salad I like never worse get that for you? There. Why would yeah. you go to McDonald's to buy a salad? Exactly. Like, why? Why even go there? Yeah. <laughs> who Who was the comedian that said it's like going to hook hooker to get a hug or something? Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, let me find a juicy one here. Um, let's do this one from um, CC Buddy Rider. In the essay, Death of the Author, an argument is made that any interpretations of art should be done without taking into account the artist's intentions. Essentially, it argues that the art and the artist are completely separate entities. I was curious, do you agree with this approach to criticism? Or do you believe the artist's intent shapes the way we perceive the art? I mean, Ooh. those are kind of like... Okay. You can still agree with it without necessarily saying that an artist's intent doesn't shape the way we perceive art you know so like i believe an mm -hmm. artist's intent does shape the way that art is perceived but i don't think that that's necessarily the be all end all like if i want to believe in the indoctrination theory for mass effect three's ending <laughs> because it makes more sense and it's more satisfying and it's just a better ending i don't care if the writers say that they had never intended that I'm still gonna believe it, okay? If the if the pieces of yeah, the puzzle fit together in that way, I'm gonna believe it. So go fuck yourselves, Bioware. It's my game. It's my experience. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's two different important conversations, isn't yeah. it? Both are valuable to me. The artist's intentions add another layer to appreciate if you can try and delve through their eyes to deconstruct it. But there's also the whole interpretation of what people get out of it. So much of filmmaking is unintentional in terms of how it comes together and what people pick apart from it and you can never control something as just, with so many variables that uh, something like a film does i know this this uh, essay was i guess talking about writing and authors but it, it does apply i guess with you're making a, a piece of art that is mm -hmm. detached from yourself it's like a it exists a, a, aside from you and it's a group effort hundreds of people can make these things yeah i don't know i it's, to me, it's not as binary, though. I like as many aspects of the conversation as possible as as, as a side to kind of just commanding that only one half of it is is as valuable. Yeah. I feel like I respect the art more if the artist's intentions are very clear. Yeah. Like you said, it's not the end-all be-all. I can still like the movie. When I watch a film like Evil Dead 2... It's very intentional. It's a very goofy <laughs> film. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the artist's yeah, and the intention. Comes from that, Everything yeah. about that experience is crafted to make you feel that way. It's very intentional, as opposed to maybe a Neil Breen film, which is, you know, I, I enjoy it perhaps in maybe a similar experience, laughing at the incompetent parts or like the goofy effects, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I guess what that are you aspect. talking about? It's perfect. But yet, yeah. <clears throat> sorry, I'm choking. <laughs> 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 Neil, like, Neil Breen is not intentional. Help. I think Neil, he's Neil Breen you thinks he's making powers. like Neil Breen thinks he's making the fountain, you know, <laughs> like a Darren Aronofsky <laughs> film. <laughs> you know, he, did, he doesn't think he's making schlock. I still love it though. It's a different experience. Ultimately, though, I'm still getting a comedy, a kind of you know. I would sooner rewatch any of Neil Breen's films than I would rewatch The Fountain. So, that's yeah, something. well, that's that is true. I, they're entertaining. Yeah. It isn't the end all be all, right? I I respect it. I respect a film that is being intentional in its tone. Mm -hmm. And when it's trying to get you to feel something, 
it, you actually feel that thing. And Neil Breen, he's usually trying to make you feel something and then he makes you laugh. Evil Dead's usually trying to make you laugh and it ends up making you laugh. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. All right. I guess that about does it for questions. Yeah. I guess awesome. so. Yeah, nice. Whose movie? Who's Alex movie turn? is. It's your <laughs> yeah. turn. So it's uh, it's my recommendation, and uh, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky if you guys don't mind. <gasps> so I actually have two movies here because I just think it would make the episode and conversation more interesting, and that's because I want to talk about Train Spotting one and two. Oh shit! Um, yeah, this will be my first time watching watch the, the second, second one, one actually. Ralph and I have seen both many times. I assume yeah. you've just seen the first one, Adam. Yeah, I saw the theater, one, yeah. the second yeah, one. Yeah, I haven't seen the second one since yeah, since it came out in the theater. So yeah. I'm curious how that's going to be. I'm very wasn't a huge fan of it when I saw it, but I think yeah, I'd like I, it I, more I, now. I think I'd appreciate yeah, I'm cu- it more. I'm curious what it's going to be like now. And I love um, the first one. The first one's really yeah. fucking good. That's a fucking yeah, yeah. awesome movie. All right. The banger. Yeah, this will be a fun discussion. Awesome. Mm. I got a train spotting poster in my room. Yeah, I have the choose life speech. It fell down the other day. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a good it's song. It's been long enough since I've seen the original also. So, oh, cool. Nice yeah. To... Good music. You yeah. know, I should get like the album of that soundtrack cuz it's a good soundtrack. Amazing. That's soundtrack. what I remember most about it. All right. If you are listening and you don't want to be spoiled for train spotting and T2, I think it's called. Terminator yeah, 2, T2, the, T2. the sequel. <laughs> yeah. Then watch it before it's like a Terminator joke. the next episode. These episodes come out every two weeks, and you can listen to them early if you go to sardonicast.com, sign up for premium, $2 a month, and also patreon.com slash sardonicast. Uh, you can do that instead if you like Patreon better, and you'll get these episodes as they're edited. Also, we got merch. And we might also check out the film... Uh, the Tomorrow War before next episode. Uh, we might, yes. we might, see, we might uh, start out the discussion with that because that's a new thing that's on Amazon Prime Video that, right that now. That might so. be pretty bad. It might take up a lot of time. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, we'll have a good uh, meaty discussion of uh, these three films. Yeah, on just how bad it is. But, you yeah, know, well, it could be good. Don't who knows? judge a book by... Don't judge a movie by its poster, Ralph. That's right. By its cover art on Amazon yeah. Prime. Don't judge a movie by it having Chris Pratt in it. Don't judge a Chris by its Pratt. Yeah. There we go. All right. Happy Shrek, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye, Shrek something.